What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Today's scenario is one that has been done before by others, but it's still a popular suggestion on this channel, and honestly, I drew a scenario about this a while ago and I kinda wanted to make an actual what if about it. Just like with my scenarios, there are people who have done their own versions of them. This is gonna be my own version of this, so even though the idea might be similar, this is my own take on the thing. I mean, this is a scenario that's been suggested even before I was on YouTube. I remember back when I was a kid, people used to draw this and write fanfics about it. It was such a popular idea for a reason, and I think we can make it pretty interesting as an actual scenario here. Especially from my point of view. I have some ideas to spice it up a bit, and it's gonna turn into a completely original story at some point. If you can't tell already by the title and the thumbnail, I'm talking about Vegeta going Super Saiyan on Namek. Now with all that out of the way, let's begin this story. So, like all what ifs, we do need to make a few changes beyond the main one. The biggest one here is that Vegeta's gonna be stronger after his Zenkai from Krillin. Actually, now that I think about it, this is really going to be the only change that I need to actually make the story work. It's pretty vague how strong Vegeta is at this point, so just to make things simpler for everyone to understand, let's go with power levels. After Vegeta exploits Zenkai from Krillin, let's put him at around 1.5 million. It's definitely very strong, but it's still not enough to face Frieza. So, a lot of the stuff goes pretty much like normal, up until when Vegeta's about to die. This is where things start to change a lot. Frieza is humiliating Vegeta, beating him up continuously, but Vegeta's strong and his strength is allowing him to survive. Even though he's being humiliated by Frieza, he's not gonna die here. This will not be his deathbed. He still has hope, hope that he can defeat Frieza. No, it's not even that. He doesn't hope to become a Super Saiyan. He knows he'll become one. This is what he needs. He is one, and Frieza's gonna push him over the edge. Of course, he doesn't know what an actual Super Saiyan is, but he's about to find out. Vegeta's nearly dead. Frieza's just having fun with him by now. And somehow, Vegeta starts to feel reinvigorated, despite being out of energy and being injured. He starts feeling energy flowing through him. Frieza hits him with a punch. It does absolutely nothing. He keeps trying to punch Vegeta. Vegeta is infuriated beyond belief. He rises up. And Frieza looks at him. It's like he's glowing or something. The others look on too. What's happening with Vegeta? He swears to Frieza. No matter what, he'll be killed. Killed by a Super Saiyan. And that Super Saiyan, it's Vegeta. This power flowing through him. This is it. It has to be. A golden key surrounds him. Those feelings and anger and determination. That need for power. It's all bubbling up within him. All the rage and resentment he feels towards Frieza, it's gonna push him to the edge. Vegeta then explodes with power. His hair, it flickers. It starts flowing as it then turns a golden color. His eyes change too. What the hell? The rest of the group watches on confused. Frieza looks on in complete awe. Vegeta is now a Super Saiyan, but he doesn't even savor the moment. He's infuriated right now. He needs to kill Frieza for humiliating him, making a mockery of him. And now as the Super Saiyan, he's gonna make sure Frieza is put in his place. He immediately starts attacking him. Vegeta can't even control his power right now. He's just using it at his maximum. And this is good, actually. It's gonna help him win here. Frieza's not at his maximum power, and with Vegeta catching him off guard and all, this means he's actually gonna get some good attacks in, injuring Frieza right off the bat. Frieza's really only at 50% power right now, which would be 60 million, although he's still holding back because he's fighting Vegeta. So we could even say he's less than that right now. But Vegeta, he jumped from 1.5 million all the way up to 75 million all within an instant, and he's using 100% of that power right away. Even if Frieza is at 60 million right now with his 50%, it's still less than what Vegeta has. Frieza throws a punch at Vegeta, but Vegeta grabs his arm, then swings Frieza into the ground. And while he still has his arm held, he throws him up into the sky. He then points two fingers into the air. Dirty fireworks. A massive explosion occurs up above. Vegeta jumps up again. Frieza is badly injured just from that. And Vegeta even chuckles. Looks like he's having a bit too much fun but he continues beating on Frieza. The roles have been reversed completely. Frieza's been badly injured to a point now where he can't even power up anymore. And it's not like he can even do anything at the moment. Vegeta's hitting him with continuous attacks. His anger's overtaking him, and it's actually a good thing here. He's not leaving himself open for Frieza to attack again. But not just that, Frieza's also in complete awe. He's looking at a Super Saiyan. He can't even process what he's seeing. Amidst all the chaos, another huge power emerges. Vegeta and Frieza can sense it as they look down below. It's Goku. He's awoken and he's now fully healed also a lot stronger than before. He asks the group what's been going on. He sends this amazing power, and they point up into the sky. That's what a Super Saiyan is? Oh wait, Vegeta's one? Well, at least he's fighting Frieza and he's kinda on their side, right? Right? Well, they're not sure if they wanna say that Vegeta's on their side, and that's why this is very concerning. Of course they were working together to fight Frieza, but who knows what Vegeta's gonna do after this? This could be really bad. They watch the fight happen, and Vegeta's fighting so relentlessly. Piccolo comments on it. If that's what he's doing to Frieza, what are they supposed to do to him? They couldn't fight Frieza. And now Vegeta's doing it without effort, really. If they're supposed to stop Vegeta next, what the hell are they gonna do? 
But Goku's not too worried. He knows that they could probably figure out something. He comments on the fight too. He just caught Frieza off guard, didn't he? Plus, Vegeta does seem badly injured himself. Of course, he did get a huge power up, but he's still lacking stamina. It's depleting rapidly, since he's using it so rapidly too, and Goku can tell, not to mention he has his injuries that he needs to worry about. Maybe in this brief outburst of anger, he's strong. And of course, having Super Saiyan does help a ton. But once the adrenaline wears off, Vegeta's gonna be a lot weaker than he is now. Still strong, but not as strong as he is at the moment. Well, they just hope Goku's right. Hopefully, they don't even have to worry about Vegeta. He continues fighting Frieza, reminding him of his promise. Vegeta said that he wasn't gonna die here, and he told Frieza that he would defeat him. A Super Saiyan would defeat him. He cocks his hands back, telling Frieza good riddance. An ominous purple glow illuminates the sky. The seas below begin getting violent, and a massive shockwave is felt by everyone on the ground. Frieza tries to catch his breath midair, but as soon as he recollects himself, he sees a massive purple glow in front of him. A Gallic gun launch ran in his direction. No, a super gallant gun. The blast hits him. He has no time to process it. It cuts clean through the atmosphere, leaving a parting in the clouds. At least, whatever clouds are left. This attack isn't just enough to defeat Frieza. It's enough to completely eviscerate him. Vegeta puts all of his power into him. His anger gets to its peak, and his determination does as well. He finishes firing the attack, no longer sensing Frieza or seeing him at all. He starts laughing maniacally, and then looks down at the ground. Slowly, he descends downwards. He tells everyone to feast their eyes, this is what he'd been saying all along. A Super Saiyan would arrive. In all honesty, he didn't know that this is what it would be. He thought he was a Super Saiyan all along, but this, this is the true Super Saiyan. I mean, it's clear. He looks down into the water, getting an actual look at his appearance. Golden hair, bluish greenish eyes. He didn't realize he changed his look so much. And this overwhelming power and that aura around him. He's thrilled. He thanks the group for their help, but now he's gonna get the Dragon Balls for himself and get immortality. Wait, what? Oh yeah, he'll spare them at least. He's not just gonna kill them off, as long as they don't get in his way. Of course, they don't really want that to happen. They don't trust Vegeta with immortality. I mean, they don't know what he's gonna do with it, especially because Frieza's not around right now. I mean, why does he need that? He's the strongest person right now, isn't he? But Vegeta said it's for reassurance. And why is it any concern to them? He reminds them, if they do wanna try and stop him, he is the Super Saiyan. He just killed Frieza in front of their eyes. He says that Kakarot definitely is strong, especially after that nice boost in power he got from healing. Maybe if Vegeta weren't a Super Saiyan, Kakarot would be able to defeat him. But that's the thing, Kakarot's not a Super Saiyan. Vegeta is overly confident right now too. But he's ready for another fight, even though he thinks this one will be pretty easy. Goku tells the group they can't back down from this. And they're all right there with him. Wow, he didn't actually expect them to stand up against him. They should be thankful. He just saved their lives. And he gave an opportunity to spare them. Just let him become immortal. Don't meddle in his plans. But you know what? This will be nice. It'll let him assert his dominance over everyone especially Kakarot. He starts to power up, and Goku's theory becomes true. They can sense Vegeta's power. It's not as high as it was before. He's used up a lot of his stamina against Frieza, and his injuries, they're still catching up to him. Even if turning into a Super Saiyan did give him a boost in energy and did help mitigate some of the injuries that he's feeling, it's not like this healed him at all or gave him a huge boost in stamina, no. He's not gonna get a second wind. He gives them one last chance to not get in his way. But Goku steps up right in front of him, shouting Kaioken. He didn't really expect a rematch against Vegeta this soon, but so be it. And Vegeta remembers that all too well. That red glow around Kakarot. He's furious. It reminds them of their fight before. The humiliation he faced on Earth. Even though he technically beat them there, it doesn't really feel fulfilling. Here, he's gonna fully beat them. Not just Kakarot, but everyone else too. They're not gonna escape this time. They're gonna regret letting him live. The group all begins fighting him, with Goku even powering up further into Kaioken. Vegeta may not be at full power or full stamina, but you know who is? Goku. He just got fully healed after all. Plus, he got a huge Zenkai boost. Even though Kaioken is going to be draining, he's starting at 100% right now. And he puts Kaioken to its max, times 20. What the hell? Vegeta's actually facing a challenge. Goku's power at this time is around 3 million. Put that at Kaioken times 20, and he's at 60 million. If Vegeta's full strength is 75 million, at least in this scenario, and he's feeling his injuries as well as his stamina loss, it should be pretty clear why he's facing this issue. Of course, he can't get an exact estimate, but Goku's power right now is exactly the same as Frieza's at 50%, except Goku's not gonna make the same mistakes as Frieza. Plus, Vegeta has disadvantages right now. Not to mention, Goku's fighting alongside Piccolo, who's very strong on his own too. Gohan and Krillin are there, but they're trying not to get in the way too much. They're strong, but they're not gonna be strong enough to make a dent in this battle. Although, maybe they could do something. Vegeta launches towards Goku. Krillin then jumps up behind him, performing a solar flip. Vegeta's completely blinded, and he's then kicked in the back, launched down into the ground by Goku. Piccolo stretches his arm out, grabbing Vegeta's leg, slamming him repeatedly into the ground. 
angered, Vegeta turns around, grabbing Piccolo's arm, ripping it clean off. But he's then hit in the back of the head with a powerful punch from Goku. Piccolo quickly regrows his arm, charging at Vegeta. The two of them are fighting together. What is this? This Namekian, this low-class Saiyan, the power of these two. And how are they fighting so well together? They're kind of winging it. But there is some synergy there which is surprising to the two of them. Oddly enough, this reminds them of fighting Raditz, except this time, they have much different strategies here, and they might be able to pull ahead without someone dying. Vegeta shouts, trying to give off even more power. But he's running on empty. The longer he fights, the more stamina he's losing from Super Saiyan. It's not just that he's been fighting for so long with that rest, it's also because he just accessed Super Saiyan. He doesn't have a control in the energy. It's gonna run out incredibly fast at this rate, especially with his state of mind right now, and his injuries. He keeps fighting, and it's actually pretty even, but as the fight continues to go on, Goku does lose a bit of stamina from Kaioken, and Vegeta's losing more from himself. And eventually, Super Saiyan disappears. What the hell? As soon as it disappears, he's hit by a powerful punch from Goku. And he really feels the pain from this. He's back at his base. He's hurting. He tries to transform again, briefly going into Super Saiyan once more, but seconds after, it disappears. He's out of stamina. Damn it all. He can't face this humiliation again. He's not gonna lose here. He's gonna get his immortality. But he also realizes. He's at such a disadvantage right now that if he continues fighting, they will kill him. They're not gonna make that same mistake as last time on Earth. So instead, he needs a distraction. Quickly, he charges a powerful Gallic gun, launching it right at Gohan and Krillin. Piccolo and Goku rush right in front of them to stop it. And they are able to easily defend against it, but it was a distraction from Vegeta. By the second it's over, he's gone. And in this sense, they hear a massive explosion. And they hear someone screaming falling from the sky. It's Bulma. What the hell? Goku jumps up and catches her. And she's freaking out. She says out of nowhere Vegeta appeared and then just blew up everything. Their ship and everything is gone. Well, it's a good thing she survived at least, but still, how the hell are they supposed to get off this planet now? And where did Vegeta go? Well, they get their answer not long after. Just as soon as Bulma appears, they see a long streak of light in the sky. It's Vegeta's space pod. Just to be an ass, he destroyed all their stuff, not even knowing that Earth Woman was in there. But he's leaving now. He's gonna cut his losses. He'll come back to Namek eventually. Of course, he could blow up the planet with everyone on it, but then, that would mean he blows up the Wish Orbs, too. He's gonna heal up and get stronger. From this fight, he can tell he's gonna get a powerful Zenkai. And next time he encounters them, he'll have a better grasp on Super Saiyan as well. He will defeat everyone. No, not just defeat them. He's gonna kill them, and he's gonna make sure to torture them along the way. But he realizes when he should cut his losses, like I said. Hence why he's leaving at the moment. Destroying their spaceship should delay them, too. And it actually does a good job at that. The group all powers down. Glad that everyone's okay, and glad that Frieza and Vegeta are gone. Well, Vegeta's gonna be out there somewhere, and they're concerned about that, especially because Vegeta knows where they live. He could definitely attack at any time, but if anything, that's gonna serve to motivate everyone to train even more. Goku's already got to test out his new strength. He just needs to go even higher with Kaioken. Actually, he could even try working on Super Saiyan. Of course, he doesn't know how he's supposed to access it, or if he even can. But maybe there's a way, and at the very least, he can still work with Kaioken like I mentioned. But there's also a big issue. How are they supposed to get off this planet? I mean, they could use Paranga, but they then realize that there's a bunch of Frieza ships scattered around. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Maybe they could just take one of these. And also in terms of reviving their friends, well, there's an easy solution right now. Thanks to help from Kami on Earth, the Dragon Balls and Namek are restored temporarily. And before Guru dies again, a wish is made to Paranga. They ask Paranga to revive all the Namekians. And the Namekians make a promise to the Earthlings. Once the Dragon Balls come back, they'll revive the other three that are still with King Kai. And they're also going to use a wish to hide their planet in case Vegeta tries to come back and get the Dragon Balls. But otherwise, they're in a good spot right now. Of course, they did lose Guru, but they thank everyone for their help. The planet is saved. And the least they could do is help revive their friends. And this is why they didn't use the Dragon Balls to just go back to Earth like that. They wanted the Namekians to revive the other ones. And they do have the Frieza ships. They try and get them to work with Bulma trying to pilot it. It's not ideal, but actually these ships are kind of high tech. Maybe she could work something out. Although, she's not able to figure out how to fly these things. It seems a lot of them are pre-programmed, so I guess they're just gonna see where it takes them. They'll get back to Earth eventually. Bulma's gonna work on it and figure out a way to reprogram the ship to get back. But they can at least see where it's going right now. Maybe it's gonna go somewhere close to Earth. She starts working on it out in space, with everyone else training on the ship, even though there's not really too much room to train. They are all worried about Vegeta coming back, but it's like Goku said before, they could defeat him. Piccolo is just as confident too. After testing out his new power thanks to Nail, he thinks they could do it. And with Gohan and Krillin, they got their potential unlocked recently. They could do so much with it. Things aren't bad, no, it's the opposite. They're all reinvigorated to train. Although, there still is the issue of them getting back to Earth. Of course, it'll happen eventually. But for now, the ship goes to somewhere random. Somewhere that was pre-programmed. 
Well, it seems that this place is habitable, and in terms of powers, they don't sense any strong powers, and there's no evil ones either, so they should be fine here. It doesn't seem like there's any threats, but they do want to figure out where they are, even if they're not going to be here for too long. Little do they know, the ship ended up taking them to planet Yardrat. So before they can head back to Earth, they're going to be here for a brief while. Meanwhile, Vegeta's out in space and he's plotting. With Vegeta now on his own out in space, he needs to figure out, what the hell is he going to do next? Well, for the time being, he could at least pursue more intensive training. That's one thing that he knows for sure. He wants to get a better grasp on Super Saiyan, seeing more growth with it, and also being able to control it better without losing too much stamina. That was a big issue on Namek. Of course, he was pretty tired out there, and he was injured, but still. Even without those factors in play, he knows that those may be issues going forward. The greatest part is, he heals up a bit after leaving Namek. He was pretty badly injured and was fighting to the brink of death. He actually did almost die against Frieza. And in terms of how much he stressed himself by draining his energy using Super Saiyan, that was like he basically almost died twice, given the expenditure of energy there. And he's elated. As he begins to heal more and more, he feels the power coursing through him. He's gonna get a massive boost in power thanks to his Zenkai. And actually, he knows what he wants to do next now. Frieza wasn't the only issue, no. Even though the Frieza force was mostly defeated on Namek, there's still some of them around the galaxy. And there is another pretty big figurehead that he needs to take care of, King Cold. He goes to seek out King Cold. Vegeta needs to make sure that there's no loose ends here. Plus, fighting King Cold will be a great test of his new power. Vegeta arrives at one of the Frieza Force's base of operations. He can sense King Cold's here, he knows it. And this time, he doesn't actually just go around killing the soldiers. No, he has an idea. He goes right to King Cold himself. And King Cold's amazed. Vegeta's alive? Wait, what happened with Frieza then? Did, did he actually kill Frieza? They did assume that he might have died, but they weren't actually sure. There's no way someone could have killed Frieza. And Vegeta confirms this. How is that possible? It's not like King Cold cared too much about him anyways, but still, what the hell is this guy that he was able to kill Frieza? Vegeta asks King Cold, is he scared of Super Saiyans as well? King Cold's taken aback, not sure what Vegeta means. And then he transforms, showing off Super Saiyan. His reaction is pretty similar to Frieza's, and Vegeta loves it. He even comments on this. He looks just like Frieza. That same face of fear that he saw on Namek. It's what he's seeing right now, and it makes him elated. There's barely even a fight here. Vegeta starts to fight King Cold, and he's actually way above him. He knew he was stronger thanks to Super Saiyan, of course, and because of his Zenkai, but it seems he gained way more strength than he first thought. King Cold tries to put up a fight, but it does absolutely nothing. He ends up dying against Vegeta. And now, Vegeta's tied up all the loose ends. But what does he do with this giant army? They're still here. He kept them alive for a reason. That's because he's gonna take them under his control. Some of the soldiers did watch this entire fight go down, and they look at Vegeta in fear. They don't know what to do, so they just kneel down to him. He was unsure before, but now, seeing this, he knows what he wants to do. This entire army, it's gonna be his now. There's no more Frieza Force, no Cold Force, whatever. Vegeta yells out to all the soldiers here. He's gonna build a new army, with no Frieza or Saiyans needed. This planet will be known as New Planet Vegeta, led by Prince Vegeta himself, who now takes Frieza's title as Lord Vegeta. But what does he want to do with this new kingdom, quote unquote kingdom? Well, he's not entirely sure, but he has an entire army at his disposal. I guess that makes it the Vegeta Force. Eh, doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely as the Frieza Force. But he goes with it. He doesn't even really need an army, but who knows, maybe he can do some pretty cool things with it. He tries to seek out Namek again, but it's gone. They did actually move the planet after he left, just like they were suggested to. Damn. Well, he could go to Earth at least, but that might be risky. I mean, yeah, he is a Super Saiyan right now, but who knows how strong Kakarot and the others have gotten. He lost to them once, he might lose to them again. He wants to at least get a little bit stronger just to ensure that he'll win. Okay, if he can't find Namek now and he doesn't want to go to Earth, what's he going to do in terms of Dragon Balls? There might be some more elsewhere. He begins trying to think, trying to figure out where he can go. Either way, he continues training just so he can remain as the strongest. He'll improve Super Saiyan even further and get even stronger, far stronger than anyone could ever imagine. Speaking of growing stronger, the other group continues their training on Yardrat. They have less time there because they do want to go back to Earth sooner, but the group does learn some unique techniques. As for Goku and Gohan, they opt to learn instant transmission, while Krillin and Piccolo focus on other spirit techniques, such as spirit fission. Goku's intrigued by this, but it's not really his style to learn this. He doesn't really just want to steal people's energy during a battle. I mean, he's fine with something like a spirit bomb where he's lended energy, but stealing energy? Eh, not really his thing. He'd rather fight the old-fashioned way. Of course, back when Goku originally went into Yardrat, well, spirit fission didn't exist. Decades ago when this was written, it wasn't a thing. But when you look at what happened with Vegeta and his training for this, we can come up with another reason for Goku to not learn it, and that's simply that he doesn't have enough time. I mean, it was shown with Vegeta. He focused so much on spirit vision that he didn't even have time to learn instant transmission. So I feel like this is a fair trade-off. 
Each person gets one thing. But either way, this suits each of their styles. Goku and Gohan can now teleport anywhere in the middle of battle, while Piccolo and Krillin have limited access to spirit fishing. But soon enough, Bulma decides that she really wants to head back to Earth. It's been way too long, and they even have a ship here so it's not going to be too hard to get there. She does want to take the ship back to Earth too just for the tech on it, but Goku decides he's just going to test out his new technique. He grabs onto everyone, placing two fingers on his forehead as he seeks out Earth, and then everything around them completely changes. He was able to do it. He actually teleported everyone to Earth. This technique's awesome. Bulma's ship was nice, but obviously this is way better. And when they return to Earth, let's say this is around the same time that Vegeta killed King Cold and took over that army. And once Goku's back on Earth, he knows exactly what he wants to do next. I mean, of course, on Yardrat, he didn't give up his goal of trying to get Super Saiyan. But now that he's on Earth, this is going to be his main focus. He wants to get this form, if it's at all possible. He's not sure how Vegeta got it though, but the others try and help to the best of their abilities by explaining what they saw, or at least what they felt too. Goku needs some sort of raw emotion. That's probably the key to it. I mean, consider the situation Vegeta was in. Maybe Goku needs something similar. Who knows though? He doesn't even know if he could access this. Maybe it's something only Elite Saiyans can do. I mean, Vegeta kept preaching about this beforehand, so maybe there's a reason that there's Elite and Low Class Saiyans. Goku doesn't know after all. He's just going off what he knows so far. He's basically just piecing together every little bit of info that he knows about Saiyans and trying to get some info from that. But either way, he could at least do some regular training, especially some gravity training too. And he has the perfect training partner for that. Gohan and Piccolo. So he spends most of his time training with them. We get into a short time skip, and not too much happens here. Of course the other humans are revived too, but besides that, there's nothing really interesting to note. It's basically just Goku and his crew training, with Vegeta trying to command his new army, and also training himself. But after this time passes on Earth, one day at Capsule Corp, a visitor shows up. It's Bulma, or at least they think it is. It looks like her, except she looks a bit older and her hairstyle is different. And there's also Bulma there already. So there's two Bulmas now? Bulma's confused. What is this? Is this Oolong or something? The other Bulma says she'll explain everything. She just needs everyone else to come here too, including Goku and all the other fighters. They all arrive at the Capital Corp, amazed to see that there's another Bulma. Oh, so this isn't a trick. This is actually another Bulma. And it turns out that she's from the future. Yep, future Bulma's the time traveler this time. And since it's Bulma, she doesn't need a secret identity. She can just go as is. Wait, if she's the Time Traveler, what happened then in the future? Well, of course, without Vegeta on Earth, Trunks was never born. At some point, Goku does fall ill to the heart virus, and he ends up dying. Then, the androids attack, killing most of the strong fighters. And with less of them around this time, this means that Gohan ended up dying too. Which he would have anyways even if Trunks was there. Although, he was able to access Super Saiyan. That's the one thing that Bulma can confirm. But besides that, everything is gone. A few others did survive, of course, including Bulma herself, who did make a time machine. This is her last shot. She's trying to fix everything by going back in time, but she's not sure if it's actually going to work. Hopefully, it at least accomplishes something. Wait, what about Vegeta, though? Well, she explains. He came to Earth and saw it in disarray. Vegeta had become incredibly influential by that point, but with no Goku on Earth and everything destroyed, he didn't care about this planet and he left it to rot. It's not like it had any value to him anyways. He only came here to get his revenge against Goku and his crew, but if they're all dead, there's nothing to do here. The androids? That's their problem. So he does still exist in the future, but he's out in space, not caring about Earth anymore. Especially because there's no Dragon Balls here. He might have done other things too, because now that there's no one to stop him, who knows, maybe he went to Namek and got immortality, or something else. But again, Bulma has no info on this. So now, the group knows of the three issues they had. Of course they knew about Vegeta beforehand, but now they have two others on top of it the androids, and the heart virus. Now, I know there might be some people in the comments asking why didn't everyone get the heart virus. Well, in my videos, I usually go with the explanation that the heart virus is something that Goku contracted as a kid, and it's been lingering in him ever since. He did live like a feral animal, after all. It was never actually confirmed that he got it on Yardrat, so that doesn't mean that everyone here is going to get it too, because they went there. I use that explanation in all my videos, and I'm going to use it again here. Okay, well, that's one thing solved. Goku will be sure to take his medicine. But what about the androids? Unlike in the main story, they're not just going to wait around to actually fight them. Maybe that idea will cross their mind, but it's not going to work here. Since it's two Bulmas, and there's one less Saiyan, there's more of a vote towards destroying the androids now instead of just leaving them. Especially with future Bulma being very persistent about it. And she's right. With the risk here, this isn't something that they could do. They have less people to fight the androids. And hearing how grim the future is, they definitely need to do something now. So, they start to seek out the androids with future Bulma there. At some point, they do find Jiro's lab. And Future Bulma is amazed. She's been looking for this the entire time, but was never able to find it. It might have even been destroyed in the future. Of course, Jiro is there too, and he's immediately killed. 
It's not like he could fight anyways. He's only just in the process of turning himself into an android. He hasn't actually done it fully yet. But where are the androids themselves? Well, Bulma said there was two of them and they look like teenagers. But since they got here so early, they're actually fine. They find the people that Jiro was scoping out. They find profiles on two teenagers, Lapis and Lazuli. But he hasn't actually kidnapped them yet. He hasn't even started working on them. He just has the blueprints. There's no androids to destroy because they're not even created yet. This is perfect. Well, almost. So those two androids might not be there, but they see a bunch of pods for other androids. All of them are labeled as failed projects or they've been destroyed, used for scrap parts. But they're able to find the most recent one, labeled number 60. This one is a powerful android apparently, according to these blueprints. But he's uncontrollable. Future Bulma says she never saw this android, and they do consider destroying him, but maybe they can do something different. Maybe they could reprogram him. I mean, why waste all this work? Bulma has way more resources than Jiro, and with her brain power combined with her dad, they probably have more intelligence collectively too. They could definitely figure something out. Future Bulma never even considered this. Yeah, that might work. They have all his blueprints here after all, and he's not activated yet. She could easily reverse engineer this. But as they continue looking around the lab, they find more and more things, more blueprints. This will be useful for future Bulma too because now she realizes that she can make a self-destruct button for the androids. Each of them seems to have a bomb in them, so that'll be perfect. It's a way for her to defeat them. But there is one more project that they find. He's not far along yet at all. He actually just started. There's some tube in a basement below where they found the androids. And something's growing in it. They can't tell yet, but the project is labeled Cell. It seems to be some sort of bio-android and it seems like it's gonna be dangerous. It's collected all the data from so many people. From every major fight that's occurred on Earth, it has data from that. As well as DNA from all these fighters. Goku, Piccolo, Gohan, King Piccolo, Vegeta, so many different fighters. It seems very dangerous. But given what they're doing with Android 16, why not take this too? From what they could tell, this Android won't be built for a while. Even if they try and speed up the process, that's not gonna work. This might take years for him to form, but they could definitely do something about it. So alongside Android 16, they take this guy too. And Future Bulma is actually glad with how this turned out. She just reminds Goku, be sure to take that medicine for the heart virus. And he says he'll try to. Well, this might not actually reverse things in the future. She still does have a theory that this might be a different timeline instead of the same one. But even if that's the case, it's okay. Of course, it means she can't reverse the damage done in her timeline, but she still can defeat the androids with the remote. And she ended up saving this timeline, so it all works out in the end. She thanks everyone for their help. And they think her too. Without her, they would have all been doomed to the same fate. They all say their goodbyes as she goes back to her timeline. Now, what is she gonna do here? Well, besides destroying the androids, she does get another idea. Maybe Jero's lab is still around there somewhere. Of course, it was too dangerous to search for before, but now she could actually look. And of course, it still is there, partially destroyed, but there are some interesting things in there. All the androids are destroyed, except for a certain project in the basement. Just like they did in the past, maybe she could reprogram this thing. Cell exists in the future too. And the thing is, he's very far along in development. She could reprogram him. Although, there still are some issues. Even with present Cell and future Cell being found, there is still a third one from another timeline trying to seek out the androids. He's only just arrived in the past, and he did have to revert to a less powerful and smaller form just to actually fit in the time machine. But soon enough, he will show up. And of course, out in space, Vegeta begins reconstructing the Saiyan Empire or at least the Vegeta Empire. There's no Saiyans needed here, just one. They just need the Super Saiyan. Android 16 is getting reprogrammed by Bulma. I mentioned this last time, and this is something that she continues working on. All this work was already put into this Android and he seems pretty sophisticated. It would be a shame to let it go to waste. At the very least, Bulma could use this research for herself. But in the best case scenario, they can have another fighter joining their ranks, one who's artificial. Well, he's not gonna be the only one though. Reprogramming him is pretty easy. I mean, Bulba did it originally, so she's gonna be able to do it here as well. And it's awesome. He's basically gonna be a training partner for Goku at first. Instead of being programmed to kill Goku, he's programmed to train Goku. He has a completely new objective and it's gonna actually benefit everyone. He's basically also Capsule Corp's version of Ultron, except he's not gonna be evil. You know, a shield for the entire Earth. They do face world-ending threats pretty often, so it would be nice to have an artificial fighter on their side like this. But as I mentioned, he's mainly there as a training device for Goku and crew. Gravity training and everything else they have is great, but having an actual training partner who's just as strong as them, if not stronger, that's gonna be huge. And Goku's pretty excited to meet him, especially hearing that he was originally programmed to kill Goku and now he's doing this. It's pretty funny, but he could tell that this guy's gonna make a great training partner, both for him and Gohan, because the two of them still wanna work towards Super Saiyan, and that's 16's main goal. He wants to help them transform in whatever way possible. But like I mentioned, 
he's not going to be the only thing that Bulma works on. She also did take Cell from Jero's lab, and she continues working on this project for herself. With her great resources, she could probably speed up the process of him being developed, and since he does need to absorb some other androids too, maybe she could navigate around that. Judging by the plans right now, he's going to come out as imperfect, which doesn't make any sense. Jero should have just made him perfect from the get-go, and she's going to do that. It is going to take a while, and she doesn't want to dedicate all her time and resources to that, and especially because he's very early on in development, this all means that he's not going to be awakened for a while. Not like decades from now, but he's still going to take some time. But while this cell is being worked on, another one appears from the future. Not the future that Bulma came from, another future timeline. There is another cell out there, one who stole a time machine from that timeline, coming back here to find the androids. But that's the thing, there's no androids here. He searches around, trying to find anything, and it seems like everything's completely peaceful right now. It's also been a few years since future Bulma arrived here. And Cell looks around. He's confused. This should be the right time. I mean, the androids are supposed to awaken around this time period right here. This is when they're supposed to be active, and this is when he can absorb them, but he can't find them. Were they killed or something? No, that's not actually the case. Of course, he doesn't know what actually happened, but he's still going to seek them out and see what he can do. Maybe he can go to Jero's lab. He makes his way over there, still absorbing some people along the way, but as soon as he gets there, he sees. It's completely destroyed. There's nothing left of it. But just as he arrives, other people arrive too. They sensed him. After absorbing so many people, and with the news of those people just randomly disappearing, they knew that something was up, and they found him. They're shocked to see him, realizing that it's Cell. Wait, how do they know about him too? They heard all about it from Bulma, and they could assume that this is just one from another timeline. They saw right through his plan. Crap, he didn't expect them to know about him either. Well, they probably didn't expect him to show up here, which is good. He still has the element of surprise on his side. But Goku confronts him. There's no androids here, and this pisses Cell off. He has to be bluffing. They have to have escaped somewhere. Nope. The androids were never made here because they stopped Rowan in his tracks. It's actually kind of funny that he mentions this too, because right next to him, Android 16 walks into the lab too. Wait, 16? He remembers hearing about some failed Project 16. Is that the same Android 16? Yep. But we'll reprogram him. Oh, and Cell's gonna love this too. She's reprogramming Cell as they speak. What? Just when Cell thinks it can't get any worse, it does get worse. But it doesn't matter though. He's powerful enough to defeat them here and now, and he'll just absorb these guys. Immediately he attacks Android 16, stabbing him with his tail, and it does absolutely nothing. Well, Cell just gave away his best technique, being able to absorb people. Of course, they knew about this already, but the fact that it doesn't work on 16 is really going to be helpful here because he's basically invincible to all of Cell's attacks. Plus, it lets everyone know to avoid his tail. And by now, Cell isn't strong enough to face them. Sure, he's powerful, but he hasn't absorbed too many people. Around this point in time, he was easily fended off by Piccolo after fusing with Khan. Of course, that hasn't happened here at all. But wait, he should be strong enough to take on Goku, right? Well, no. It's been a few years since Future Bulma showed up, and Goku's been waiting to show this off against someone. Of course, it's not really a surprise to Cell, but Goku transforms, going into Super Saiyan. And it's not just him either. Gohan transforms too. The two of them are ready to fight. Goku asks Gohan if he's ready, saying that this is going to be his first real test as a Super Saiyan. Gohan nods in agreement, and 16 joins in as well. Cell shrieks at them, ready to fight. And an all-out battle begins as the mountain around Jero's lab begins getting destroyed. The other fighters watch on. Krillin comments on this. Goku unlocked Super Saiyan pretty recently, but still, this is amazing to actually see it go all out. He knew that it would be strong, but not like this. Same for Gohan, too. It actually seems like Gohan's pretty close to Goku's level, which is surprising. He, of course, has less control than Goku. The two of them have unlocked it a few months ago during this time skip. Goku was the first one to get it, and Gohan was after that. 16's training has really helped them, not only getting stronger in their base forms, but of course unlocking this too. And the best part is, with how cautious everyone's being, Goku has taken his heart virus medicine. That's not going to be a problem here either. This whole arc was almost entirely avoided. The only android here is Cell himself. And without the other androids, it's not like he's going to become perfect either. If anything, he's just a nice mini-boss for Goku to fight. A nice test of his power at this point. He compliments him, telling Cell he is pretty strong, and he's excited. Excited because he knows that another Cell is going to awaken soon. And if this Cell is this strong, he can't even imagine how strong the other Cell will be, because that Cell is going to be better than this guy. Cell says that's blasphemous. He's the only Cell here, and he's going to be perfect. But Goku's confident. That's not going to happen here. He and Gohan work together alongside 16. Of course, Cell's regeneration is kind of an issue, but they're able to work around it. 16 holds off Cell alone, as Goku and Gohan get together. He tells Gohan they'll need a combined attack, be ready to use his full power. The two stand back to back, cupping their hands, charging a Kamehameha. 16 then sees the cue, 
grabbing onto Cell's tail, flinging him right at Goku and Gohan. And Cell looks on, seeing a brilliant blue light in front of him, mixed with the golden aura of Super Saiyan. Two Super Saiyans, in fact. The two of them simultaneously shout, launching the Kamehameha in Cell's direction. He tries to stop himself, but it's too late already. The blast hits him point blank, making direct contact, slowly disintegrating every little bit of him. And 16 also joins in too, just to make sure every little piece is erased. The Kamehameha combines with the Hell's Flash from above. And the two of them power down, giving a thumbs up to 16, who smiles at them. That was fun, and it's reassuring to know that now everything's at peace from the androids. No need to worry about them anymore. At least the evil ones, no offense to 16. They know he's cool. Oh yeah, it's also worth mentioning. Goten's been born during this time already too. Given the amount of peacetime on Earth, well, that's another thing that's happened during this time. And before we get to Vegeta in space, there is one more thing I want to mention. Since Vegeta was never on Earth, Boma would probably end up with someone different. I feel like eventually she would want to settle down with someone as a boyfriend. And there's a perfect option here, Yamcha. They dated before, so it's not entirely out of the question. And without Vegeta in the picture, Yamcha's able to make his move again, reconciling with her and getting back together. It's great for both of them. And with Yamcha knowing his mistakes from before and being much more mature, things will probably work out this time. Probably. Okay, and now we go out into space. So, what's Vegeta been up to? Well, while Goku and Gohan were trying to go Super Saiyan, he was trying to go beyond Super Saiyan. Of course, he's already had it by now, and he's already getting to a point where he's mastered it even. Just by training more and more with it and getting even more efficient than he was before, Vegeta was able to actually master it getting grade 4. But still, he feels he could probably go beyond it. He's still not sure, though. He's gonna have to find someone to test his strength against. Kakarot? Well, no, he still has that issue of not going to Earth. If he goes there, who knows? He doesn't know what he's gonna encounter there, and it might be kinda hard to find the Dragon Balls. He wants to get the Dragon Balls first, but he also can't find Namek, and it gets him thinking. Well, if there's a Namekian on Earth, maybe Namekians went elsewhere too. They are the source of the Dragon Balls after all, so who knows? Maybe there's another set out there, and thankfully, he has an entire army at his disposal with a bunch of knowledge. And eventually they're able to find out about a new Namekian, or at least, one that's rumored to exist on a planet somewhere called Serial. Vegeta doesn't know the truth behind this, but he might as well go find out for himself. I mean, he has nothing else to do. So, he takes a trip out to this planet. His army's been growing very strong by now, and Vegeta has grown very influential. All he needs now is to go beyond Super Saiyan and get the Dragon Balls. These are the only two goals in his life at the moment, and both of them seem within his grasp. Maybe both of them will go hand in hand. Who knows? He arrives at Planet Serial, and he does remember hearing about this place. Long ago, the Saiyans attacked it, and now there's a completely different group of people living here. So, maybe that Namekian was here, but he got killed during that attack. Who knows, though? Of course, Vegeta himself wasn't there. All he knows is the secondhand accounts from it. Also, judging by that destroyed city with a bunch of giant footprints in it, he could tell. But as he looks around trying to search for this Namekian, suddenly, a blast of energy comes right towards him. He dodges just in the nick of time, but it scrapes his face, leaving a deep cup. Had he not stepped out of the way, he would have been dead. What was that? More blasts come his way, and he powers up into Super Saiyan. He's under attack, but from who? It can't be one of those inhabitants, they're so weak. And if it was that Namekian, well, he doesn't expect the Namekians to have this type of power either. He closes in on this power, getting closer and closer to the mountains and not knowing where it's coming from. But he follows the sniper shots. And then he sees what he is. There is one Cerulean left, the last of his people. It's Granola. He immediately attacked. He knows of Vegeta by now. I mean, he did replace Frieza after all. Granola is just surprised that he came here so soon. He's always wanted to defeat Frieza and the Saiyans. But he heard that Vegeta did the job of defeating Frieza for him, and now Vegeta's the one with the influence, the one who took over the army. It infuriates him to no end that Vegeta's here of all people. Granola doesn't even say anything, he just immediately jumps into the fight. Vegeta's confused as to what's going on. But if this guy wants to fight, then so be it. He does ask though, trying to inquire about why he's fighting. This guy is actually pretty strong, even kind of matching him in a Super Saiyan form, thanks to his abilities as a Cerulean. And eventually he is able to pry the info out of Granola, with Granola telling him everything. Just like he expected. He has a grudge against the Saiyans, a grudge against him. Vegeta says that the Saiyans are no more though. It's just him and, of course, that Kakarot guy. Not that he cares about him though. Vegeta would have let this planet live in peace, but if he wants to attack the Emperor, of course, Vegeta's gonna have to fight back. He can't just sit by and take it. It's not something that someone like him would do. He is royalty after all. He needs to be respected. But as he continues fighting, Granola's anger overcomes him. He goes through an evolution, with his other eye turning red as well. Vegeta notices a change in his power. Of course, he knows very little about the species, but it seems that they can change too, evolving as they fight. 
and now with this new upgrade, Granola's actually getting the advantage against Vegeta. What the hell? How is he able to fight Vegeta as a Super Saiyan? Vegeta's not going to stand for it. He tries to fight back, but everything he does against Granola doesn't work. And with Granola knowing his vital points and all, he's actually able to pull ahead in this battle. Even without having made a wish on the Dragon Balls or whatever, Granola is still pretty strong. And I'd say around this point, he'd probably be equal to Vegeta, and now with his evolution to power, he's above him, getting the advantage in the fight, and he's ready to kill Vegeta. But then Vegeta realizes, this is what he needed. He hasn't had a good fight like this in so long. Remember the last time he faced a challenge like this? It was against Frieza and against Kakarot. And that first one, the fight against Frieza, that's what caused him to go Super Saiyan initially. Maybe if he wants to go beyond Super Saiyan, he needs something like this, something to push him beyond that level. As Granola continues getting an advantage over Vegeta, Vegeta starts smiling, and Granola wonders why. He's about to face his death. What's he so happy about? But Vegeta says, it's actually quite the contrary. Granola is going to face his death at the hands of the Emperor who is about to ascend Super Saiyan. Granola doesn't know what he's talking about, and he continues fighting. And Vegeta feels it, that rage bubbling up within him, that desire for power. It's not just the anger that's going to help him transform, it's the need for the power too. The fight continues onward. Vegeta takes more and more damage, but suddenly he feels it. Something within him snaps. His aura flares up greatly as he shouts. Sparks of electricity surround him. The power is enough to even throw Granola back. What is this? His power had changed once again. Vegeta looks down at his hands, and noticing the sparks of electricity crackling around him, the power is overflowing within him, and he laughs maniacally. He thanks Granola too. Just like he expected, this is what he needed. He needed a push to go beyond Super Saiyan. And just to keep things simple, why not call this Super Saiyan 2? Granola tries to attack him again, but Vegeta's too fast. He moves behind Granola. Granola tries to strike a vital point, but Vegeta's quick enough to grab his hand, then flipping Granola over him, throwing him into the dirt, and then jumping up in the air, launching a volley of Ki Blast downwards. Angrily, Granola launches himself upwards at Vegeta, with a hand out in front of him trying to strike a vital point. But quickly, quicker than Granola can react, Vegeta charges a Galaga, launching it right down at him, pummeling Granola into the ground once more. Vegeta then rockets up into the sky, rocketing back down with a powerful kick. Before Granola can get up out of the dirt, Vegeta's foot meets his chest. All the wind is knocked out of Granola, and Vegeta continuously punches him. It's a shame. He can tell that Granola would have made a great soldier, but he knows that this guy won't back down. He picks Granola up, tossing him aside. He commends him. He did give Vegeta a good fight, and he acknowledges his strength as a warrior, but he knows that he can't let Granola live. Hopefully, he finds solace in a warrior's death. Granola weakly looks up as Vegeta charges a big bang attack, finishing him off. Of course, nearby, Minato has been watching everything, horrified. Not only is Vegeta here, but he just killed Granola. Minato doesn't even know how to feel, but before he can even react to this at all, Vegeta sends him nearby. Minato tries to move, but with Vegeta's speed being so high right now, it's almost like he teleports right in front of him. Oh, it's the Namekian. He does exist. Vegeta assumes he just saw what went down, so he's not going to ask this twice. He wants to know, where are the Dragon Balls? He does threaten Minato, but he does know that if he kills him right here, then the Dragon Balls will cease to exist too. Of course, Minato is not going to tell him, but it's fine. By now, the Frieza Force has the technology to track Dragon Balls. I mean, they had it before, so they're going to have it here too. All right, well, it seems like they're gonna have to do this the hard way. Minato braces for Vegeta to attack him, but he doesn't. He reaches into his pocket, pulling out a dragon radar. And it turns out, it actually wasn't tough. The two of them are right together, right inside of Minato's house. Minato knows that he's hopeless to stop Vegeta, and he just simply asks, what is he gonna wish for? And Vegeta turns to him, don't worry, he's not in danger. But he gives an evil grin. If he actually wants to know, well, he can just watch the wish be made. He summons Taranbo with Minato watching on in horror, and the rest of Vegeta's army watching on in amazement. Vegeta's wish is a pretty simple one, one that could even be granted without any conditions, which is nice. Finally, it's surreal. He can't believe that he has it right here. He simply asks the dragon, make him immortal. The dragon confirms his wish, and Vegeta feels a slight increase in power. All of his injuries are healed. It's almost like he never fought Granola, but otherwise, he doesn't feel different at all. Minato suspects that Vegeta's gonna kill him now, but he doesn't. He's a tyrant, but he's not a merciless random killer like Frieza. I mean, he will kill people all the time, but not randomly like Frieza did. But just to make sure that no one can get use out of this dragon anymore, right before Taramba leaves, Vegeta launches a big bang attack, killing the dragon and destroying it. The two Dragon Balls reappear, just as stone now. Minato looks on horrified and speechless. And to make things even worse, a familiar ship lands nearby. It's the Heaters. Vegeta's confused. More powers nearby? Well, it's a great way to test his immortality to see if this actually works. The heaters step off their ship to confront Vegeta. 
They see a massive crater nearby with some remains of granola, such as articles of his clothing. They can assume what happened. They're pretty disappointed with Vegeta. They know he is an emperor and all, but granola was one of their best soldiers. It seems like they're gonna have a problem here. The heaters confront Vegeta, thinking that he might be a threat. So, this is the guy that's in charge now that Frieza's gone. Who made him emperor? And Vegeta says he doesn't need anyone to make him emperor. He made himself emperor. I mean, just look at his great power. Did they not just witness that fight between him and that Cerulean? Not to mention, he's a Saiyan. He's one of the last of his kind. Incredibly strong to begin with, and he was the one to defeat Frieza. They have heard rumors of this, but now they get the confirmation from Vegeta himself. And they see an opportunity here. He seems to be irrational. Not that Frieza was the most rational at times, but this guy? They could probably exploit it somehow. And maybe he has faults. Maybe defeating Frieza was pure luck. Plus, they might be stronger too, especially since their last encounter with Hisei. This could be a perfect opportunity for them. Kill Vegeta, take the power left in that vacuum. And then the heaters could be in control of everything, getting wealth beyond their wildest dreams and power beyond what they wanted. Also, look at the group. There's four of them versus one Vegeta. How bad could this possibly be? They have a reason to attack him after all. And Vegeta could sense this. He could tell. Well, if they're gonna attack him, go ahead already. Stop wasting his time. He taunts them, trying to get them to fight. And the heaters oblige. Well, if Vegeta's inviting them to, they may as well. They begin attacking him. And it becomes clear pretty quickly that Vegeta's above them. Vegeta says he'll let them live. He does need some strong soldiers after all. But they're offended by this. That implies that he defeated them. They've still got some fight left in them. Vegeta's curious. What do they mean by that? Alec looks over to Gas. And the group's unsure of it, but they try and unleash Gas's full power, letting him lose control. And Vegeta's impressed by this transformation. He does get stronger, but Vegeta's not worried at all. Gas attacks him, and Vegeta allows the attacks to hit. Vegeta even goes into Super Saiyan 2, and it's painful. These attacks are strong, and he's purposely leaving himself open. It's risky, but it seems like it's working. Gas absolutely mangles Vegeta, tossing him aside. But Vegeta? He then stands up. All his wounds, they're healed. Slowly but surely, every injury on his body goes away, and he begins laughing maniacally. Now do they see what he wished for on the Dragon Balls? He wished to become immortal. They're not going to be able to defeat him, and if anything, they just helped him. By attacking him and having him heal, he's grown stronger. Even stronger than he was before. Even stronger than he was when he got Super Saiyan 2 against Granola. Now they've really screwed up. Vegeta powers up, showing off his full strength. It's enough to even make Gas scared. And simply put, he wipes them all out, getting rid of the heaters as well. That was a fun battle, and he did get some benefit from it. Not only did he get stronger from this, but it allowed him to test out his immortality. And also, it did make him think of something. What he said before about wanting a strong army, that still is true. He just has a bunch of random expendable soldiers right now that can't really do anything. He doesn't want to do all the work himself. Of course, it is fun from time to time, but with an empire like his, he needs strong people. He needs more people. He can't just rely on these grunts everywhere. The heaters would have made nice soldiers, but he could tell it wouldn't have worked out. He needs to go elsewhere. See if he can find any other strong soldiers out there. And with this brand new power now, there's nothing that can stand in his way. He's immortal, he's strong. Although, there are a couple things on his mind. There is Kakarot. He doesn't really care as much about Kakarot or Earth anymore. He's fine as is. He got what he wanted and he's continually growing. But there is still a dragon there, and he assumes that there's more out there. Obviously, he does know the one on Namek too. And that could be an issue for his immortality. Someone could easily just reverse it, right? Well, no one will know that he's immortal, at least not yet. The only people that saw were Minido and the Heaters. And who's Minido gonna tell? Also, there was Granola, so everyone who saw it is dead, or it's just a Namekian out here in the middle of nowhere. He'll be fine, but this does stay on his mind. Maybe someone can reverse his immortality, and he needs to make sure that doesn't happen. Eventually, he will go after the other dragons, destroying them to ensure his immortality. He'll continue growing even stronger, with his army growing just as powerful as well. King Vegeta IV's reign begins. And now, he begins looking for another strong soldier. He needs a few, but he doesn't really know where to start looking. He sends out some of his scouts, going to a bunch of different planets, seeing what they could locate. Maybe they could find some planet with a high power on it. And as they look around, there's not too many strong people, but one of his scouts comes across a certain planet. The planet seems abandoned, uninhabitable even, but there's a strong power on there. And Vegeta decides he's gonna go check it out himself, seeing if it's worthwhile to try and convince this person to join his army. As he arrives on this planet, he's kind of weirded out by it. There's no one here, except he senses two powers. One is kind of low, and one's a little bit higher, also randomly increasing at times. He flies over to where he senses these powers, confronting these two people. His jaw drops. Saiyans? And their jaws drop too. Vegeta? 
Right now, he's on planet Vampa, and he just encountered Broly and Paragus. No words are exchanged. Vegeta's about to say something, but Paragus can't even think straight. He tells Broly, attack. And Vegeta's confused. What the hell? They're Saiyans, why are they attacking him? Broly immediately attacks Vegeta without question. They don't know why Vegeta's here or how he even found them, but they're not gonna wait and question it. Broly immediately starts attacking him, and Vegeta can tell this guy's powerful. Even in his base, he's contending with Vegeta. No, actually, Vegeta's base isn't gonna be enough. He has to transform into Super Saiyan. And Broly's power is still too strong for him. And this guy, he seems completely berserk, completely controlled by his anger. Paragus watches on too. Glad to see this, Vegeta's finally gonna be killed. Of course, he's completely stunned by the fact that he's a Super Saiyan, or at least he assumes that's what that is. But still, even with that Super Saiyan power, Broly's still winning. And Paragus laughs. Vegeta came right to them. He walked right into his doom. They don't need to do anything anymore, and they'll just steal his ship and leave here now. But as Broly continues fighting, Vegeta then powers up even more, going into Super Saiyan 2, and also healing from his injuries from before, getting stronger on top of that. He knows. The Saiyan's growing as he fights. He can clearly tell that. He's strong as is, and his anger's controlling him, bringing out more and more of his raw power. And he sees now. These were the Saiyans that were exiled by his father, or at least this one that he's fighting. Paragus even explains, too. Vegeta thinks it's dumb that he's trying to attack him for something that his father did. But whatever, he is the king now, so maybe he does hold some responsibility. And Paragus is completely shocked. How is Broly not killing him? Broly seeming to do a lot of damage, but every time he does, Vegeta just regenerates, getting stronger and stronger. Vegeta doesn't reveal that he's immortal, of course, but he mentions that he's not going to be injured by this guy. Vegeta eventually does get the upper hand, and even though Broly's unleashing more and more power, Vegeta eventually does beat him. Not killing him, just knocking him unconscious. He then turns to Paragus, wondering why the hell he did that. There's no point to hold a grudge against him. Vegeta was here to help, try and recruit them for his new army. He killed Frieza, he tells them everything, but Paragus doesn't care. He still holds that grudge against Vegeta and his father. And Vegeta offers one last time. He'll put this all behind them, he'll let them live, and he'll sweep this attempted assassination under the rug. They should come join him. Stop whining about the past. Make it water under the bridge. It wasn't his fault. Vegeta was just a kid when this happened. He's the same age as Broly, after all. Paragus is annoyed. The gall of Vegeta to even suggest this. He doesn't get what they've been through, and he doesn't get where they're coming from. But Paragus takes some time to consider. Now that he's cooled down a bit, and that Broly's unconscious and there's no fight going on, he does have some time to think. He hesitates with his response. And then, he drops his guard. Maybe they can let this grudge go. It wasn't Vegeta's fault, he's right. He could kill Vegeta, but then that would make him no better than King Vegeta. That's the point. He wanted to get back at the king, but if he's dead, who cares? All the Saiyans are gone too, and this is his only shot of getting off planet Vampa. He doesn't like Vegeta. This isn't just a change of heart right here. It's just that this seems like the logical choice. So, reluctantly, Paragus decides to join Vegeta. He and Broly will work under him. But they expect to be treated very fairly by Vegeta, not just because they're Saiyans, but because of what they've been through here. They want to be compensated somehow. And Vegeta says, don't worry. As long as they're loyal soldiers, he'll make sure they're treated the best possible way they can be. He knows Paragus does have some sort of expertise in the military. And as for Broly, he's not going to let that power go to waste. He'll take them off this hellish planet, and he'll form them into fine soldiers for his army. And he tells them not to worry. It's nothing like King Cold's army, Frieza's army, or even King Vegeta's army. This is something completely new. Hence why it's been successful so far. Especially judging by the fact that they found these two. That should be proof enough. So, the two of them go off with Vegeta, and now they begin their training with Vegeta's army. Let's go back to Earth for a bit too. We've covered a lot with Vegeta, so we can go back here now. On Earth, 16 is still training with Goku, Gohan, and Goten. Time is passing and there's not really much else to do. Of course they're going to continue their training, and they want to try and get as strong as possible. Super Saiyan's great, for Goku especially, but Gohan's trying to get a grasp on it too. Goten's a bit young by now, but it's better to start him off early. Gohan did start pretty young too. So, by the time Goten's a few years old, he could join in as well. And having 16 as a training partner is great. He can continue to be upgraded by Bulma, and it's a nice little project for her. It benefits her, it benefits Goku, and it basically benefits everyone else too because they can train alongside 16. They have so many great training facilities. The gravity room, training with 16. They can even train on the lookout. Everyone's growing stronger and more confident as time goes on. But all the while, Bulma is still working on another project. While she does upgrade Android 16 from time to time, there's also another Android she still has to work on. It's Cell. A lot of time has passed since they found Cell, and she's still working on him, and she's able to circumvent a lot of Jero's work. Besides the obvious fact that she wants to remove all the Kill Goku stuff, she could probably tweak Cell to be good. Way better than he was before. Of course, this Cell won't have the DNA of Frieza right now because Frieza never came to Earth at this point. The future Cell did, but this guy doesn't yet. So that makes it a little bit easier to make him more good. 
but he most likely wouldn't have the insane potential of Cell, at least not the Cell that we know of. Although, he does have a lot of stuff in him. A lot of Saiyan DNA, hybrid Saiyan DNA too, which makes up for the lack of Frieza DNA. And of course, the Mechian DNA as well. And as Bulma works on him more and more, she sees other things that could be improved. As long as this project works well, she should even give him infinite energy like they have with Android 16. And it's interesting, this bio android can regenerate, not just like Piccolo can, but even beyond that. Combine that with the fact that he has Saiyan DNA, and this can make him really powerful when he regenerates. And of course, she doesn't want him to just be imperfect when he awakens. She can make it so he's perfect as soon as he hatches. Something she never really got in the first place, but hey, she can work around it because she has the resources and such. More time passes, a couple years since the last part actually. And finally, the project is complete. She calls everyone over. This has been a passion project for some time now, and she's excited to see how it turns out. But just in case something goes wrong, which she doubts, it would be nice to have everyone here just in case. The chamber that Cell's in begins breaking, and a figure emerges from it. Cell steps out. He has a look of bewilderment on his face, a little bit confused, but also, he just seems to be dazed, like someone who just woke up, which does make sense. And he looks around. His vision focuses and he sees everyone in front of him. He recognizes them instantly. Bulma, someone whose DNA is in him. Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, all these people around him. He already has knowledge of them and DNA from them too. But his attention is mainly drawn to Goku. Something about him intrigues Cell, this guy specifically. He doesn't know why. It's almost like he was made to meet him. Slowly, he walks up to Goku, not saying anything. The two make eye contact. Goku's smiling, but he becomes a little bit serious, even partially on guard for a bit. Cell then sticks a hand out, greeting Goku, saying that his name is Cell. Goku's smile returns, growing even bigger than before, shaking Cell's hand, saying that he's glad to meet him. Cell looks around. These people, they're his family. I mean, he is actually related to them after all. He has their DNA. And it's nice to be awoken finally, to be complete, to be perfect. He gets a look at himself in the mirror. This is what perfection looks like. And he turns over to Bulma, thanking her. Of course, he has all the data from beforehand with Cell. She couldn't completely undo everything, so Cell kinda does know his origins, at least a little bit about it. And he thanks her for this clarity. He's a good being. He's powerful. He feels fulfilled. And most importantly, he's perfect. The group is confident. Now with Cell here, they have another person to rely on, another strong fighter, and another strong friend. It'll be interesting to see how this guy is, how he acts and such, and more importantly, how strong he is. And actually, it's perfect timing too. Gohan then suggests, Cell wants to test out his power, doesn't he? And Cell's intrigued. Yeah, he does. What, does Gohan want to fight? And Gohan says he'll fight with Cell eventually. He feels like it's necessary. But more importantly, there's a better opportunity for this. A world tournament is coming up. A world tournament? Oh yeah, Cell has vague knowledge of that. Maybe, maybe this could be fun. That's right, next time we'll be heading into the Boo Saga, at least on the Earth side of things. But as for Vegeta, we still will be covering what's happening with him, Broly, and the rest of his army. With his newfound immortality and his newfound partner, what's it going to be like for Vegeta next? And is he eventually going to come to Earth? He considers all his options, wondering where to go now. He has so much that he could do. All this power, all this influence, his immortality. The potential is limitless. He has so much he could try out. It's almost overwhelming, actually. Vegeta ponders. What's next for him and his empire? And at the same time, the group on Earth ponders too. What's Cell going to be like? What lies ahead for them too? What kind of foes are they going to face in the future, if any? Now with Cell awakened, he's hyped. For lack of a better word, that's all he's feeling. He's just elated to be here, to be perfect, to have all these great allies. And Goku feels the same way, as well as everyone else around him. It's a little bit weird to have Cell here, knowing what the other Cell was like. And especially because this Cell is a lot stronger, but he seems purely good. It's so weird because there's not an ounce of evil within him. He's the perfect rival, the perfect ally, the perfect being, actually. Besides him just being stronger with all his great data and everything, he's also perfect from the get-go, which is a huge bonus. It's a pretty obvious upside, so I don't really have to explain why that's so great. And thankfully, with him being such a great training partner, this helps everyone else get stronger. It motivates them even more. And it helps Goku and Gohan. They have the perfect person to fight against, no pun intended. This guy, he'll help them go beyond Super Saiyan. They'll become so much stronger training alongside someone like this. And they can immediately see it right away. Once they start training with him, Cell's battle smarts and intelligence really help out here. But beyond that, his power too. Training with someone so strong is definitely going to rub off on them. It allows them to train at higher levels, not having to worry for the safety of others around them because Cell, he can just regenerate. And even besides that, he's stronger than them. The stuff that they do doesn't really affect him too much. Which is kind of concerning because if he does turn out to be bad, yeah, that's not going to be a great thing but he's clearly very good here. 
and Goku and Gohan aren't concerned. Although, they are concerned about someone, Vegeta. They haven't heard anything from him or about him in a while, and they're wondering what's going on there. Of course, they don't expect Vegeta to just contact them randomly. No, they more so expected Vegeta to show up on Earth sometime soon. Maybe he wanted to get the Dragon Balls. He wanted to become immortal after all, so why didn't he show up here? Their minds keep going through the worst possible scenarios. What if he found Dragon Ball somewhere else? What if he's immortal right now? What if he's stronger than them? They don't know what to think. I mean, he was ahead of them after all by getting Super Saiyan early on. But Cell tells them not to worry so much. Thinking about that doesn't matter, because Vegeta's not a threat right now. Maybe he will be in the future, but right now, they gotta focus on everything at hand. They just gotta get stronger as is, especially for the tournament coming up. And if Vegeta does show up in the future, it doesn't really matter. Cell's here now. He'll help defend against him. And alongside these two fighting with him, he's confident. Vegeta won't be an issue. He hasn't personally met Vegeta, but for what he knows about him, he could definitely defeat Vegeta. Even if somehow Vegeta is immortal, he's not worried. And now, the group begins getting ready for the tournament, because by this time, actually a lot of time has passed. We're at the end of the time skip going into the Buu Saga. And there have been some pretty big changes. Goku and Gohan have gotten a lot stronger, accessing Super Saiyan 2, although since it happened so late, they're not really too practiced with it. But this tournament will be a great opportunity to test it, especially if they end up fighting each other or Cell, and they'll be testing it in front of an audience. There's going to be stakes here, so it'll pressure them to use it more wisely. The tournament begins, and much of it goes normal at first, up until Gohan's fight with Kibito. Here, Gohan actually has instant transmission, so that's going to help him out a lot here, and it makes it a lot harder for Shin and Kibito to stop him in his tracks. But still, they are able to paralyze him, allowing Spobovich to absorb his energy. And seeing this gets everyone really suspicious. Gohan could teleport around. There's no way he couldn't avoid something like this, so why did this happen? And they look and see. Those two weird guys that they saw before. It's gotta be them. That guy in the ring with Gohan, and that other guy that was with him. And Piccolo then realizes what happened. Of course, he could already tell who Shin and Kibito are. But that guy that just stabbed Gohan, he stole his energy. And Piccolo decides to intervene. As Spobovich and Yama try to escape, everyone else goes to help Gohan. But Piccolo actually chases after them. Shin and Kibito try to stop Piccolo, but he doesn't care. He goes up to them and immediately starts using Force Spirit Fission. This amazes Shin and Kibito. He steals the energy back, giving it to Gohan, fully healing him and making sure that Spobovich doesn't have any of that energy. They didn't realize that they had a technique like this, and it's not just Piccolo either. Krillin, of course, has it too. And now, the Kais decide to reveal themselves, saying who they are, why they're here, and what's going on. They were going to follow Spobovich and Yamato Babi's place, and they can still do that. But now that they know Piccolo and Krillin have this ability, this will really help. If they get to Boo's egg, they can just use it to absorb any of the energy that Bobbity's gathered so far, returning it to its original source and stopping Boo's revival before it even happens. And they do know that Bobbity has some strong fighters with him, especially that Deborah guy. But that's not going to be a problem here. They have the perfect person to fight him. Once again, no pun intended, I just keep saying perfect. But I am referring to Cell. Cell is very strong here. Actually, I'd say he's stronger than the normal perfect cell because, first of all, he's been training. Second of all, he has more data than that cell, even if he doesn't have Frieza. And third, he actually has more abilities here. Cell offers to fight this guy. He doesn't know who Debor is, but he can't be that bad. Especially for Cell's power, he's been looking to face someone like this. And if it helps him protect the others, then he's happy. As long as his friends are okay, that's all he cares about. It's really weird hearing this from Cell because they saw him perfect cell. And he definitely wasn't like this guy. But it's nice to have a guy that's so... nice. Cell is definitely a great ally, a great rival, and a great friend. And the group heads off to Bobbity's ship, and if they make this quick, they can actually get back for the tournament, resuming it and fighting it to the end. Cell immediately faces Deborah, and Deborah can tell that something's off about the Cell guy. He doesn't seem like a natural being, but that doesn't matter. Deborah will definitely defeat him, while the others go inside of Bobbity's ship, trying to defeat the others and stop Bobbity in his tracks. And of course, Bobbity's already panicking. He decides he's going to try and get another servant for himself. Maybe he could possess someone, but no, that's not going to work here. You might think, maybe he could possess Cell, but Cell's purely good. All that evilness has been removed from him, thanks to Bulma. So, that's not going to be an option. Goku and Gohan? Definitely not. Piccolo? He's far beyond that point, so no. And anyone else? Well, there's not an ounce of evil within them. There's no reason for anyone else to become a Majin here, so Bobbity's kind of screwed. Especially once he sees that Cell actually kills Jabora. Oh yeah, Cell wasn't screwing around. And before he knows it, people burst into the bottom of his ship. Immediately, Piccolo and Krillin start punching Boo's egg. He wonders why they're doing this. They're just going to be giving more energy, if anything. But then he sees. The energy from the egg, it starts depleting somehow. What the hell? Their attacks are actually working? It's not like Bobbity can do anything about it either because he's killed immediately by Goku and Gohan. Piccolo and Krillin keep attacking the egg, taking all the energy out of it. Until there's absolutely nothing left within it. Shin and Kibito are amazed. 
that worked way better than they thought it would. I mean, now, not only have they found Boo's Egg and stopped Bobbity, but all the energy has been removed from it, and now they can just safely take it to their planet. And it was pretty quick, too. They thank everyone for their help. They're pretty glad to have helped because first of all, they didn't really have a choice. I mean, they didn't want to let Boo run wild. And also, Cell got a nice fight out of it. And it was a good experience for Piccolo and Krillin to actually utilize Force Spirit Fission in a battle. Not really a battle, but the fact that they actually got to utilize it for once, it's great. They don't really like to use this in fights because it's kind of cowardly. I mean, just stealing everyone's energy. But here, this is the perfect scenario for it. It protects Earth and it's necessary here. That's the only way to stop Boo. And Shin and Kabuto decide to stay and watch the tournament. The group heads back just in time. Thankfully, the crowd didn't have to wait too long, and the tournament actually resumes right where it left off. Shin and Kabuto actually forfeit. And Cell was happy with that warm-up. He's ready for some more fights, and especially after seeing Four Spirit Vision. That's something he has, doesn't he? Because he is part Krillin and Piccolo after all, so maybe he could utilize that. Not here, but it's something to keep in mind for him. And the rest of the group is itching to fight too. They face Pui Pui and Yakon, but those people were nothing. Here, they're going to actually be able to fight strong fighters. The tournament goes on. And it's not really worth covering too much. Eventually, we do get to the final battle, which is worth covering. The semi-final includes Gohan vs. Piccolo and Cell vs. Goku, with Gohan and Cell winning their respective fights. And this is a really interesting matchup. Gohan vs. Cell. Gohan is decently powerful, and actually, he's probably at the point where he surpassed Goku by now. But Cell, he's still pretty strong regardless, and he knows that he has the advantage over Gohan, but Gohan's ready for anything that comes towards him. He knows that Cell's stronger and has an advantage in many different areas, such as the fact that he can just regenerate too. And Cell offers to handicap himself, but Gohan says no. He needs to test his power, and what better way to do it than having Cell go all out too. And Cell acknowledges this. Both of them already know the outcome of this fight, but it still should be fun regardless. Gohan shows off Super Saiyan 2 at its fullest, with Cell showing off all of his power. It's amazing. The crowd's kind of freaked out by Cell, but also at the same time, intrigued. I mean, he doesn't look human, but it's not like he's an ugly alien or anything. He looks handsome, kinda. But still, they're confused. What the hell is he? Maybe that's just some weird costume. That crown thing on his head, it's gotta be a hat. There's no way that's actually part of him. Or those wings on his back and everything else on him. It's weird, but they're still intrigued by him, never having heard of this guy before. Against Gohan, Cell ends up winning, and then finally he has to face Mr. Satan. As we know already, Mr. Satan's already incredibly powerful. He already beat Cell in the main story anyway, so of course he's gonna win here against him. No, but Cell's gonna take the fall here just because Mr. Satan seems like a nice guy. And Mr. Satan offers all of them money, so that's also part of it. Not that Cell needs the money, but it would be nice for Goku and Gohan. He knows Chi-Chi wants to get some. So with the Boo Saga going so smoothly, like pretty much all of my videos, what's gonna happen now? No, I'm not skipping right to Battle of Gods from here. There's actually something else that's happening. Of course, this What If's mostly about Vegeta. It wouldn't make sense to have a part that doesn't cover Vegeta, and he's definitely gonna be involved here. He's still out in space, continuing to grow even more. Not just his empire, but his power. He wants to get stronger. Yeah, he has Super Saiyan 2, but who knows? Maybe he can go beyond that. Super Saiyan 3, maybe? Super Saiyan 4, 5, 6, 7? Who the hell knows? He doesn't know where his limited power is, especially because he's immortal now. He can keep exploiting Zenkai's. Those boosts in power that he gets as a Saiyan? It's incredible. Combine that with immortality? It's awesome. Plus, he has Broly there. His strongest ally, and really his only ally that matters, because the rest of the army is kind of fodder. Training alongside Broly is great, getting to see this power from a Saiyan. But as the two are training together more and more, Broly notes something. Far away, it's kind of faint, but he senses something. Vegeta focuses too. Yeah, he could feel it. He senses some sort of strong power, but he recognizes it immediately. Well, at least one of them. He senses a few powers there. One of them being Cell, and he can't really tell what it is, but the power is really strong. There's also Deboer. He senses Goku. He senses Gohan. But most importantly, like I mentioned, he senses Goku. That's the one that he picks out. It's Kakarot. His power. It's so much stronger than before, and something about it, it feels... It feels like he's a Super Saiyan. No, no, no. Beyond that. Does he have Super Saiyan 2 as well? There's no way. Kakarot couldn't have gotten Super Saiyan, much less ascended that and go into Super Saiyan 2. But also, Gohan, that brat, that hybrid Saiyan. There's no way he could have gotten it either. And Vegeta's impressed. But also, he's annoyed. He swore that one day he would defeat them. He never got the chance to truly win. And he needs to get that victory and savor it. But there's not really reason for him to head to Earth besides that, just to boost an ego. Although, now that he's immortal, it doesn't really matter. He could take a risk like these because who cares? What's the worst that could happen to him? If he goes to Earth right now and fights, even if he does lose, which he doubts because he's so strong by now, it's not like he's gonna die. He can't be killed. No matter what they do, nothing's gonna work. Although, it will give away his ability. The fact that he's immortal, and they'll know, and they could probably even reverse it. So, there is that risk there. 
but then he remembers. Yeah, he was always concerned about that. Extra Dragon Balls. If anyone knew about his immortality, they could have gotten the Dragon Balls themselves and reversed it. So maybe it is worthwhile to head to Earth. Maybe if he goes there and destroys those Dragon Balls, he won't have to worry about it anymore. And then after that, he can finally fight Kakarot again, winning and killing him. So he decides to head out, going there with no army beside him, except for Broly. Broly will be good enough to hold off the others. He knows that Kakarot's gonna try and gang up on him, but he just wants to fight Kakarot alone. As for the others, he tells Broly to do what he wants. And it doesn't take too long. After everything at the tournament, a few weeks pass. Cell is in the middle of nowhere, meditating with Piccolo. And the two of them notice something. Two powers are heading towards Earth. One of them, they can't really tell what it is. But as for Piccolo, he can tell what the other power is. It's Vegeta. Something's changed about him though. Yeah, he's stronger, but something about him, his presence, it feels a lot more overwhelming. Something about it's strange. The ships land nearby. Cell grabs onto Piccolo, teleporting him over. And just as they get there, they see Gohan and Goku teleport in too. They watch as the ships open up. Of course, off of one of them, Vegeta steps out. And then from another, steps out another Saiyan, it looks like. They don't know who Broly is, but this guy's power, it feels incredible. They can't believe that there's another Saiyan out there. But more importantly, the fact that Vegeta's here. Why is he here now? Does he want the Dragon Balls? Is he trying to pursue immortality? Of course, they could question Vegeta, but there's no way he's gonna answer. What they know for certain is one thing. He's here for a fight. He's here for a rematch, to settle the score against Kakarot and pretty much everyone else too. Not many words are exchanged, and Vegeta's glad to see them here already. He tells Kakarot, this time, during this rematch, he's gonna kill Kakarot. He will come out victorious. And Goku wonders why he's so confident. What about him has changed? He tells Vegeta, just before they fight, he should know. They also have Super Saiyan, and even a level beyond Super Saiyan, just as Vegeta expected. And he tells them, he doesn't care. He has Super Saiyan 2 as well. And of course, he's worked on Super Saiyan even more, but that doesn't matter. He'll utilize Super Saiyan 2 to its fullest. Because he's immortal, he doesn't have any issues with stamina or whatever. If it wears him out or whatever, it doesn't matter. He just regenerates afterwards. Of course, he doesn't tell them all of this, but he thinks it. And he tells Kakarot. He knows he's strong, and he knows that he might be an obstacle to Vegeta's empire. Empire? Goku doesn't know what he's talking about. He has an empire? Vegeta chuckles. He doesn't know what happened to Vegeta after Namek. He knew Kakarot was in the dark, but it's only just now hitting him. He knows nothing of what's been going on in space, the grander scheme of things. Oh, and he completely forgot. How rude. He introduces everyone to Broly, his strongest soldier and a fellow saint. And this is where we'll leave off for now. All right, so the Earthlings are a little bit confused. First of all, why does Vegeta want to come here and cause trouble? There's no real reason to do this. It's just senseless. And also, this other saint. The fact that he has another saint with him, well, it's a little bit intimidating because they know what the Saiyans are capable of. But there's no way he could be that strong, right? But Goku can tell. There's something weird about his power. Like, there's something he's hiding. Maybe this Saiyan isn't what he seems. His power and base alone seems insane. So, they definitely all need to be cautious. This is no regular Saiyan. Same goes for Vegeta. But Vegeta doesn't want to waste any more time. He assumes a battle stance, asking them to start this already. He'll even be gracious enough to let them get the first attack in. He powers up into Super Saiyan. And in response, Goku and Gohan power up into Super Saiyan as well. This briefly does surprise Vegeta, but at this point, he kind of expects them to have Super Saiyan already. He'd be surprised if they didn't yet. Although he's still confident. His Super Saiyan must be far ahead of theirs, right? There's no way they could have perfected it like he did. And better yet, he can go beyond Super Saiyan. Who knows if they can do that? Probably not. Goku rushes in for the first attack, and he begins clashing with Vegeta. As for Broly, he goes to attack the other fighters. Broly's fighting style has already been very refined by Vegeta. Thanks to all the training with Vegeta and from Vegeta, Broly's becoming a lot better as a fighter. He still can't really control that rage too well, but Vegeta's kind of betting on that to happen. And even if not, Broly's power and base alone is more than enough to fight these guys. At least Vegeta assumes so. But as they expected, right now Vegeta seems to be the stronger one. Cell decides he's gonna join Goku in his fight, just to make sure things go okay with Vegeta. Everyone else here could hold off Broly, or at least they hope so. But Gohan's confident, he'll lead this charge against Broly. Vegeta's curious as to who this other fighter is. His key, it's not normal. It feels like a conglomerate of all the other keys that he sensed before. Cell chuckles, explaining. He tells Vegeta he's the perfect warrior, and also a defender of Earth. A perfect warrior? That makes Vegeta laugh. He's the perfect warrior. But Cell tells Vegeta to not get too cocky. He hasn't seen Cell's full power yet. This is a Cell that's constantly been training and also has upgrades from Bulma. Like, why would she pass up giving him an infinite energy engine? He has that here. 
plus all the great stuff from Cell before him. Or at least this What Ifs version of Cell. I covered it all in the previous parts, but even with the differences here, yeah, he's still way stronger than the normal one. And Vegeta finds his battle with Goku and Cell to actually be kind of tough. Alright, this isn't too bad. He powers up into Super Saiyan 2. And, much to his surprise, Goku powers up into Super Saiyan 2 as well. Damn it, he didn't expect Goku to have this. Gohan takes this as his cue to power up as well. Wait, both of them have it? But he could tell, there is a drawback. The two of them aren't as practiced at Super Saiyan 2 as he is. They're still pretty good at it, but he's way more efficient. Especially with him being immortal, he's basically infinitely efficient when you think about it. If he depletes all of his stamina, well, that kills him and then he gets revived. Oh yeah, he just realized too. They don't know about the immortality yet. He could use that to his advantage, a trump card. That's what he was worried about in the first place, that other people would know and then maybe wish it away. But they don't know. They're acting as if he's a normal fighter. And Vegeta begins thinking, okay, if this fight is going nowhere, maybe he could exploit some Zenkais. He tries to coax them into killing him. He's not sure if he can get Kakarot to do it, but Cell, maybe he can hit a nerve with him. He just needs to threaten something, like threaten destruction against Earth or whatever. And maybe they'll try and go for the kill. All he needs to do is drop his energy, allowing them to quote unquote kill him. And then he gets stronger from it. He starts taunting them and telling them he's also just gonna blow up Earth. He tries to act like he's defeated, saying even if he already lost this battle, it doesn't matter. He'll just blow up Earth and escape. They think he's bluffing, but he makes it look like he's actually going to do this. He is still bluffing, but it looks real. He starts retreating from the fight, lowering his energy too. Broly even follows him as well. He knows this plan. As the two of them fly away, Goku and Gohan get together, launching a combined Kamehameha, with Cell in the middle launching a Makanko Sapa with Piccolo. The four attacks all fuse together, creating a massive spiraling beam that's about to hit Vegeta and Broly. Vegeta grabs Broly, tossing him out of the way, taking the full force of the attack. Interesting, he saved his partner from it. Maybe Vegeta does have a heart, but that attack definitely did kill him. That would have definitely finished it off. They wanted to be sure. But they still sense Vegeta's energy, and they see, floating there in the middle of the sky, a mangled, bloodied Vegeta. It's horrific. There's no way he could survive those injuries. It basically looks like he's already a corpse. But slowly, he begins rebuilding himself. He regenerates, starting to morph back into the normal Vegeta. He takes a breath of air, and then breathes out relieved. That's exactly what he needed. And he could feel it, powers coursing through him. From that experience, he got so much stronger. The group is just confused, and he takes advantage of this confusion. He sticks out a hand quickly, and before anyone can react, he launches a massive Big Bang attack directly at Cell, seemingly disintegrating the android. The group looks on in awe. They're not concerned because they know Cell can regenerate, but they act concerned. Maybe Cell has a plan, because he would have instantly regenerated otherwise. All right, they'll keep quiet and go along with whatever Cell's doing. They act angered, looking at Vegeta, asking what's going on. And he tells them, simply put, they won't be able to kill him. He is immortal. Wait, immortal? Like, he got the wish from the Dragon Balls to become immortal? But how? They stopped him on Namek. Well, the way he got it is none of their concern. All that matters is he's undefeatable. He's not going to die. Not by their hand, not by anyone's hand. He is the Supreme Emperor of this universe now, and his power reigns over everybody. He beckons Broly to get up, and Broly stands up, cracking his neck, and then charging more power. The fight isn't over, it's only just begun. Vegeta charges back in, and Goku's having a tough time fighting him. He already was before, but now Vegeta's way stronger. He got multiple times stronger just from dying, quote unquote. He knew Saiyans had this ability, but combined with immortality, this is definitely nothing to be messed with. But he still remembers, Cell has a plan. He hasn't regenerated yet and he could vaguely sense Cell's energy, so he wasn't fully erased. This is part of something, this is purposeful. And all the fighters hear voices in their heads. Well, besides Broly and Vegeta. Cell begins communicating with them. He tells them to wait for his cue. And once he's back, he wants Piccolo and Krillin to use Force Spirit Fission on Broly. But just wait for his cue. He has to wait for the perfect timing for this. Force Spirit Fission? Oh yeah, they didn't even think of that. Using that in this battle would be great. Broly's power is continuously growing, and by doing this, they'll debuff him. But more importantly for Vegeta, if they can't kill him, they can at least continuously drain his energy. And maybe even channel that into an attack to use against him. Well, Cell says that wouldn't really be a good idea. He's just going to regenerate from any attack anyways. First, they need to aim to take out Broly. And then, they need to figure out a way to restrain Vegeta. Goku fights to the best of his abilities. Being joined by Gohan, who now leaves the others to fight Broly alone. And as the two fights rage on, a massive power suddenly emerges in two different places. Within an instant, Cell regenerates, but not just one Cell, there's two of them. 
Vegeta and Broly turn around, but it's already too late. They feel a sharp pain in their sides as Cell pierces them with his tail, while also hitting both of them with a flurry of punches. They're able to free themselves of Cell's grasp. Surprise, yeah, that's exactly what Cell was going for, the element of surprise. They didn't know that he could regenerate fully either. Of course, he can die unlike Vegeta, but it's pretty hard to kill him. And he used that fake death as an opportunity to attack. But what did he just do? Why'd he stab them? Well, what he did was twofold. He used this surprise to his advantage. For one, he absorbed power from both of them, now having both of their DNA as well. The two cells merged together into one cell. Now with the power of Broly and Vegeta, as well as all the data to go along with that. And they do feel drained from this. Cell did take away some of their energy, and of course, Vegeta replenishes it. But then, they start feeling even more drained. They remove Cell's tail, though. Why are they still getting their energy drained? It's very slow. And they assume maybe it's some technique of Cell's. So they try and attack him together, but the rest of the group jumps in to help. With Piccolo and Krillin then using a flurry of attacks against Broly to do the same. And slowly, the Force Spirit Fission begins ramping up. Broly is starting to feel a lot weaker. And as for Vegeta, it's very slow, but it's still happening. He doesn't know what's going on. Cell is being very careful. He doesn't want to kill Vegeta. It seems that whenever Vegeta dies, quote unquote, the immortality kicks in, regenerating him completely. But if he's injured, or if his energy is depleted like this, very slowly, then he'll just be handicapped like any other fighter that gets their energy drained. Broly tries to summon more power, utilizing his rage even, but he's just too weak. He could barely stand up anymore. And Vegeta finally sees. They're using something to drain their energy. Krillin and Piccolo continue pummeling Broly draining all the energy they can without killing him. Cell continues to do the same to Vegeta, and both of them are on the ground, too weak to stand up. Vegeta even tries to injure himself just to make the immortality kick in, but he can't even generate a key attack strong enough to do this. And even if he tried, Cell and Goku would stop him right away. Gohan grabs onto all the other fighters, teleporting them and Broly over here, and Vegeta sees that the same thing happened to his soldier. What is this? This stupid magic trick? He reacts the same way to Gohan teleporting as well. They could teleport instantaneously, steal energy, or at least he assumes that's what's happening. Of course, they're not gonna give away their techniques, but they tell Vegeta, even if he's immortal, they could still beat him. Their techniques are more than enough to counter this. Vegeta's not even strong enough to turn Super Saiyan anymore. He begins cursing them, slamming his fist into the ground. But wait, there may be one way to win this. He places a scouter on his face. He tells his troops, everyone, go to Earth now. This isn't supposed to win the fight for him, no. It's just the perfect distraction. Soon enough, a bunch of troops begin descending on Earth. All of Vegeta's army is there, and they go right towards the Emperor's location. The group has a pretty easy time fighting them off, but Vegeta and Broly use this as an opportunity to slip away. And Vegeta turns to one of the soldiers, one of the stronger ones at least. He tells the soldier to injure him, try and kill him. And the soldier is able to do so. Vegeta drops his power as far as possible. As he's killed by that soldier, then regenerating, once again growing even stronger than before and having everything restored. This plan, they're not even fighting fairly. Well, immortality isn't really fair, but for Vegeta, that's something else. They're using random parlor tricks. They can't even fight like true warriors. And you know what? He shouldn't have been so petty about this grudge. He doesn't need to settle it firsthand. He'll just kill them all from space. As he retreats with Broly, he tells the soldiers to start leaving. He draws his hands back, charging a massive Gallic gun. His soldiers all fly past him illuminated by the purple glow from the attack. And the group looks on from below, seeing a very familiar sight, Vegeta in the sky, charging one of his signature moves. Goku even chuckles a bit. He yells to Vegeta, that didn't work before, and it's not gonna work again. He powers back up into Super Saiyan 2, with the rest of the group standing beside him. Vegeta launches his Gallic gun, while the group on Earth launches a combined Kamehameha, and a Masenko from Piccolo, I guess. Actually, you know what, no. He does a Kamehameha as well gotta fit in with the rest of them, and it's pretty easy to replicate. Jokes aside though, the beams clash. Vegeta starts putting as much power into it as possible, and slowly, he is overcoming them. But Gohan turns to the group, saying he has an idea. He'll be gone for a very brief moment. Cell tells Gohan it's okay. He'll pick up the slack for him. Gohan powers up as far as he can, channeling all his energy into the attack, and then suddenly, teleporting away. Vegeta's then surprised. Someone teleports right next to him. It's Kakarot's son. He tries to swing a fist at Gohan, but before he even can, Gohan grabs onto Vegeta, and then the two of them teleport away. Vegeta's beam dissipates, while the massive Kamehameha flies off into space, and they see all of Vegeta's ships leaving, including Broly who escaped too with the rest of the soldiers. But there's no Vegeta or Gohan. But where do they go? 
Well, far away, on a random planet with barely any energy, Gohan and Vegeta appear. It seems like they can actually live on this planet. The air is breathable and such. Vegeta's anger beyond belief, trying to attack Gohan. And if any of these attacks hit, Gohan would definitely be dead. But thankfully he could teleport, using instant transmission to trip Vegeta up. Where the hell are they? He demands to know. And Gohan simply says, he doesn't know. He tells Vegeta that's his problem, swiping the scouter from Vegeta's face, and then quickly teleporting away back to Earth. And Vegeta looks around. He's gone. He left. And he tries to sense any powers, but no, he can't sense anything. And without a scouter, he doesn't even know where he is and he can't call for backup. Gohan returns to Earth, and they ask where he went. He says they can't kill Vegeta, so they can at least quarantine him. He found a random planet, far away. He doesn't even know where it is, and he doubts that his army will be able to find it. He also holds up Vegeta's scouter. He stranded Vegeta on a random faraway planet. There's no way he's gonna get back. Unless he wants to fly out into space and continuously die and regenerate. Wow, they commend Gohan. That was actually pretty smart. Vegeta's army is mostly defeated, now out in space without a leader. And as for Vegeta, he's stranded on a random planet with no one able to help him. He screams, but no one's able to hear it. Now, Vegeta is stuck on this random planet. He can fly in space, but it is painful because he just keeps dying. Yeah, immortality does help him. So technically it would be possible, but it's also incredibly painful. He's going out there, suffocating himself, regenerating, and then rinsing and repeating. He does attempt it at first, but realizes it's not worth the effort. Especially because he has no idea where he's heading to or where he is. He's completely lost, abandoned in the middle of nowhere. The more he realizes his situation, the angrier he grows. Kakarot and his son, he will kill them. And it's not because he wants to settle the score or anything. It's not because he wants to fight them at all. It's because he just simply wants to kill them now. He's changed. He's becoming more bitter, angrier. Vegeta's becoming a much different person. He was already evil before, but it's festering now. In solitude, there really is only one thing he could do, train. He'll continue training here, and he'll figure out a way off this planet somehow. It's just him here. No one and nothing else is here. He has to survive off the foliage. He's lucky enough to have some food and water, but not a ton. Not that it really matters though. If he dies from starvation or whatever, he'll just regenerate. It's a painful, miserable existence. More reason for him to hate those Earthlings. His rage grows daily, getting angrier and angrier, getting stronger and stronger. So now, what's happening with his army? Well, since Broly escaped, he and Paragus take the army under their wing. Broly does want to seek out Vegeta, just to see if he could find him and save him. But Paragus ends up convincing Broly not to. He still holds some resentment for Vegeta and says they don't necessarily need to find him. I mean, this army could be theirs now. They could use all the power from it. And Broly's not really gonna turn down what Paragus says. He doesn't really care about controlling the army or whatever, but if Paragus is telling him and advising him that this is a good idea, then he's gonna go along with it. When really, Paragus is doing it for his own sake. As Vegeta continues his training here, someone shows up on the planet eventually. His power consistently is rising, and across the galaxy and the universe, it can be sensed. And one particular person senses it. Someone that's actually seeking out a powerful Saiyan like him. A long time has passed since Vegeta was abandoned here. And now, the person that shows up to see him first is Beerus and Whis. Of course, Vegeta's completely shocked to see Beerus here. Why and how is he here? How did he find Vegeta? Well, Beerus begins explaining. Not only did he sense Vegeta's power, but he did also have a dream, a premonition of sorts, about some sort of Super Saiyan God. And since Vegeta was powerful and one of the Saiyans that they could actually find and knew about, they decided to come check him out, see what's going on here, what he's doing here. Vegeta explains his situation, but does confirm to Beerus he is the strongest Saiyan in existence, as well as being immortal. Really? That's intriguing. An immortal Saiyan? For all Beerus knows, he could definitely go down the path of becoming a Super Saiyan God, if he already isn't one, because he has no idea of what that is, and it seems that Vegeta doesn't either. Beerus says that they might want to ask the other Saiyans, but he tells them that they're not going to know anything. He knows of the other Saiyans that he's talking about. Out there, there's Kakarot, his two sons, there's Broly, Paragus, and even his brother Tarbul. None of them will have more knowledge than him, especially those Earthlings. If anything, Vegeta's the most knowledgeable Saiyan left. And if he doesn't know about a Super Saiyan God, none of those people definitely will. And it doesn't matter anyways, he tells Beerus it's not worth making them Super Saiyan Gods. Because Vegeta's just gonna hunt them down eventually and kill them all. Well, besides Tarbo, he didn't do anything wrong. He doesn't even know where his brother is, but that's besides the point. And the more Vegeta talks, the more he thinks. Beerus is actually considering this. I mean, he does know Vegeta's royalty and apparently an elite Saiyan. And if what he's saying is all true, especially the immortality part, he could potentially be a very great rival. 
it might not be worth seeking out the other Saiyans. And even though Vegeta has no idea of what a Super Saiyan God is, he tells Beerus he has a plan, something that he's always been working with. As long as he can exploit his Zenkais and all, and get more proper training, he promises Beerus, whatever the Super Saiyan God is, he'll grow into it. He'll become one, at any cost. He doesn't know how to get there, but he knows that he will get there. Beerus smiles. Is Vegeta really sure about that? That's quite the commitment, especially the way Vegeta's wanted to go about it. Vegeta smiles back in response too. Anything to kill those pesky Earthlings. Anything to get stronger. Anything to get off this random rock in space. Beerus agrees to take Vegeta under his wing. Meaning, Vegeta now goes to Beerus' planet, training under Whis. More and more time begins passing. Beerus is a little bit frustrated. Nothing that Vegeta's doing is working. He has ascended Super Saiyan 2 even, getting Super Saiyan 3, or at least that's what Vegeta calls it. And it's strong, it's definitely potent, but it's nothing that Beerus is really interested in. He still wants Super Saiyan God, and this definitely isn't that. Vegeta even works towards mastering Super Saiyan 3, but nothing he does can get him Super Saiyan God, although he continues his training. He's confident. Through brute force, rage, pain, as well as all his training with Whis, he grows stronger, much stronger than he ever did before, grown exponentially fast. And Beerus can start sensing it. Within Vegeta, trace amounts of God Key. Maybe that's the key to it, just giving him God Key. If Vegeta gets enough of this and learns how to control it in a way that he can transform with it, maybe that's how he'll get Super Saiyan God. They keep going down this path, with Vegeta getting stronger and stronger along the way as well. And with this persistent training, Vegeta finally becomes a Super Saiyan God, transforming one day, showing off the amazing power of it. And Vegeta admires it, the divinity, the strength, this definitely is a Super Saiyan God. There's no doubt about it. And he definitely is impressed, but once they start fighting, he notices. Vegeta's still not on his level, not even close. He wants Vegeta to go further. This definitely is a Super Saiyan God, but maybe it's just the starting point. Beerus is elated that the prophecy is true, but they could probably go beyond it. This is just the foundation for what he wants. Vegeta will definitely be his rival, although it's just going to take a little bit more training. Back on Earth, everyone else is improving themselves as well, specifically Cell. He starts researching DNA from Broly and Vegeta. He did retrieve some from the battle, as well as all the data from them. He knows that Vegeta is going to be a problem in the future. Even though he's not a threat right now, they're definitely going to encounter him sometime down the line. And that's why he needs to figure out some sort of way to defeat him. He wants to figure out what it will take to actually defeat an immortal person like Vegeta. He wants to take it upon himself to do this. Using his smarts and his strength, he could find out a way to defend Earth. And he could try to use this data for his own gain, to get stronger, not only defending Earth, but improving himself as well, becoming a much stronger being. First, he gets a pretty good idea. He thinks that maybe if he lets Vegeta's army stay around, they'll find him eventually, saving him off that planet, and then Vegeta will just come back here. So they need to be eliminated. Cell goes out into space, using instant transmission to easily locate the army. And he's also going to get some more data from them, specifically because Broly and Paragus are still there. Really, his main target's Broly. With ease, Cell eliminates the entire army. Broly strikes back, trying to attack Cell, using more and more of his power. But Cell is stronger now. And he knows everything about Broly, but he continues studying him. You know, without Vegeta, this guy isn't really that big of a threat. And Cell gets all the data he needs. He sees how Broly grows, getting stronger with his anger and rage, growing during battle. It's intriguing, and he could definitely use it for himself. Simply, he stabs Broly with his tail, not only taking more energy from him, but completely draining him of it. Broly dies, and Cell gets all of his energy, as well as more data on him. Getting a grasp on Broly's techniques and abilities, too. What a nice snack. And now, Vegeta's entire army is gone. That's weird, this means that they haven't found Vegeta yet. Which might be good, but could also be bad. Maybe they betrayed him. Or, maybe they were in the process of finding him and he just stopped them in the midst of that. And he looks around and it seems like they had no idea of where Vegeta was. They didn't even try. So, the army did betray him. Vegeta's still out there somewhere, rogue. Probably still on that same planet. But Gohan doesn't remember where it is. He just teleported to the farthest energy he could find. It was a faint trace of key that he's found on a planet. Just the planet's energy alone was what he sensed. He doesn't know where it was, and he doesn't know where it is now. Well, that seems like a dead end. But at least Cell knows that the army is gone. Although, it's kind of a shame. He expected a much more enjoyable battle with Broly. But with Vegeta and Broly's cells within him, Cell begins noticing something. There's a bit of a change going on. He's being influenced by these. Now, Broly wasn't necessarily evil, but Vegeta, oh yeah, most certainly he was. And as Cell fights more and more, as well as absorbing people like he just did with Broly, he's getting a better taste for it. This is, this is kind of enjoyable. Fighting people like this, absorbing them, taking all their power, getting stronger, this desire for strength and a good battle. 
it continues growing. He's loving battle even more. But is it to a fault? Is it a bad thing? Or is it something like what Goku has? Where he just enjoys a battle from time to time? Well, they don't know yet. And Cell doesn't really know either. There may be an internal conflict going on within him. And for all we know, he might be heading down a dark path. But for now, he keeps himself in check. And this isn't really a big concern, just yet at least. It's not only Cell continuing his training, everyone on Earth wants to as well, because they know that Vegeta could show up at any point, and they want to be strong enough to face him. Of course, Beerus never shows up on Earth, so they're just training. Living relatively peaceful lives while also trying to get stronger. Goku, Gohan, and everyone else are pretty much influenced by Cell. He wants them to train more. He wants to be a good rival for them. Of course, his strength is far superior to theirs. But by helping them get stronger, it could make for more interesting fights between him and them. And also, it ensures that Earth's going to be protected. And Goku has an idea. They could go beyond where they currently are in terms of Super Saiyan. Obviously, they don't know Super Saiyan God, but maybe they can go beyond Super Saiyan too. Just as Vegeta is doing his training, they're going to train to ascend Super Saiyan, but in a much different way. Although, they're not really too sure how to go about that. At a certain point, Goku might discover Super Saiyan 3. But beyond that, what is he supposed to do? He tries to think. Maybe besides perfecting this form, there's something else. There's another form beyond it, maybe. And Gohan gets an idea. Well, Saiyans used to transform by turning into great apes, right? And they had that transformation. Well, yeah, that's a good point. And Gohan wonders, what if they were able to turn great ape again? Well, that's not gonna happen. Goku says that they don't have their tails anymore. That can't work. Not even Goten was born with one. And even if they could transform into that, first of all, they need to gain a control in it. And then, what Gohan's saying is that they need to add Super Saiyan on top of that. That might be impossible. And yeah, that is true. But since it's an innate ability for the Saiyans, Gohan thinks that there might be another way to make them transform. He's not too sure. Of course, he knows nothing about Saiyans. But maybe if they consult Bulma, she could help with something. Oh yeah, Goku never even really thought of that. Even if they don't have their tails anymore, this is still something that's programmed within Saiyans, basically, with their DNA. They're built to transform like this. Their tail is gone, which means that they can't transform as easily. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't transform at all. Maybe there's a way, and they just need to find that. Meanwhile, on Beerus' planet, Vegeta continues his training too, growing exponentially thanks to Beerus and Whis' help. He denounces the Saiyans. Only one of them is needed, Vegeta. No longer a prince, no longer a king, whatever. It's just him, just Vegeta, the supreme being in the universe, at least the supreme mortal. He doesn't need an army. He doesn't need Saiyans. He doesn't need any colleagues or allies or whatever. He just needs strength. He just needs to pursue this even further. He will cement his superiority over everyone. He already knows he's better, but he needs to cement it. He needs to let everybody know. And he needs to get his revenge. He becomes more and more resentful, more angry, more bitter. And Beerus and Whis notice this too. It's a bit concerning. For a Super Saiyan God, they expected someone a bit calmer, a bit more collected too. And Whis is mostly disappointed in this because this probably means Vegeta's not gonna get that technique that he wants him to work towards. Although, Beerus is intrigued. He gets an idea. If Vegeta's being destructive like this, well, he could be a perfect candidate to become a god of destruction someday. Of course, the thoughts cross Beerus' mind, but Vegeta does seem too volatile at the moment. They'll definitely need to work on that. Although, he could channel all this anger. All these negative emotions could be channeled into his destructive abilities. Utilizing this power, he could potentially be a very effective fighter. And now, as Beerus thinks about it even more, he's getting even more intrigued. He turns to Whis. He definitely wants to do this. Vegeta, with these destructive abilities, imagine that. Like he said, Super Saiyan God was just a stepping stone. If he truly wants a rival like this, well, this is the path that Vegeta's gonna have to go down. And Beerus just needs to introduce him to it. Death will follow. Vegeta could get his revenge. Cell could turn evil. Maybe both. Maybe neither. This part will dictate the course of the universe. Who lives? Who dies? Vegeta continues training with Beerus and Whis, relentlessly trying to get stronger. He does anything in his power to do so. Thankfully, he's still immortal. No one's actually gathered the Dragon Balls yet, and this makes his training a lot more effective. But he wants to use it as quickly as possible. Now that people do know he's immortal, it could be reversed easily. So he lives every moment like it's his last. He doesn't act too reckless with it, but he still has that bruteness within him. And that same bruteness is what helps him achieve Ultra Ego, exactly what Beerus is looking for. Not exactly what Whis wanted, but still, this is something. And Vegeta's late. With this power, the power of a god of destruction, and immortality, he's unstoppable. There's no way to stop him now. Like, how do you end that? How do you stop someone that powerful? You can't. Although, there is one person seeking out Vegeta, trying to do exactly that. And it's Cell. He looks around, trying to find Vegeta anywhere in space that he can. 
He wants to make sure what Gohan did was permanent, but he also does want to fight Vegeta. He has no clue of where Vegeta could possibly be. Gohan just dropped him off on some random planet and now they don't sense Vegeta at all. But as Cell continues searching around, it finally hits him. He's not looking in the right place. No, 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 no. Vegeta's not in this realm. He's somewhere else. And Cell, he has access to those realms. He does have use of the Kai Kai. Thanks to all the great info he's collected so far. Well, there's only one way to find out where Vegeta is. Try out this technique. He tries to picture everything he knows about this universe. He goes to Otherworld. He goes to Hell. But there's somewhere he's missing. Wait a second. The God of Destruction. He has vague knowledge. But maybe that God of Destruction exists in a separate place. And there is a slim chance that Vegeta could be there. Cell hopes not, but he decides to check it out anyways. And sure enough, Cell ends up on Beerus' planet, seeing three people there. Beerus, Whis, and Vegeta. They're surprised to see someone made their way here, and Vegeta's especially surprised. That's that guy from Earth, that android. What, did he come here for revenge? That's not gonna work. Vegeta tells Cell, this time, if he's trying to fight, there's no way he's gonna win. First of all, he doesn't have any of his friends with him. And second of all, Vegeta has great new techniques at his disposal. Not to mention an immense amount of new power. And he's still immortal on top of all that. And Cell gets right down to business. He tells Vegeta that's exactly what he's here to do. Defeat him once and for all. Beerus and Whis look on. At first, Beerus contemplates destroying Cell, but this could be interesting. Seeing Vegeta fight someone that might be his equal. Who knows though, maybe Cell's way below him. Maybe he's way beyond Vegeta. This could be fun to watch at least, so they sit back and let Vegeta do whatever he wants. Vegeta powers up, jumping into battle, showing off one of his new forms, Super Saiyan God. And as the two clash, Vegeta begins talking with Cell. He can see it within him. Cell isn't fully good, and they could work together, become rivals. Cell would be a good rival for him after all. He has great powers, and even though he's not immortal, that regeneration, it's close enough. They would be perfect to fight each other. Vegeta could tell that he has that fighting spirit within him. And apparently, Cell is an amalgamation of all those other people on Earth, which means he's part Saiyan. This is in his blood. He loves fighting, doesn't he? That also should mean he's part Vegeta, too. He could appeal to that side. Appeal to the part of Cell that he influences. And he also tells Cell something that he probably didn't even realize yet. Cell has Vegeta's DNA, and not the old one, no, no, no. He has an updated version of what Vegeta actually is. All that data on him. Plus the power that he stole from Vegeta. His drones continue to operate, but also... Cell has physically stolen some power from him back in their first fight. Does that also mean more of Vegeta's DNA is within him now? Does Vegeta have more influence? And more importantly, does that mean Cell is partially immortal thanks to Vegeta's DNA? Cell never even realized that. He didn't think of it like that and he doesn't really want to try it out because it could be risky. The only way he could find out is if he just tries to kill himself. But obviously that's not a good idea. But what Vegeta says might be true. He has felt different ever since, not just with Vegeta's influence, but also in terms of his strength, his regeneration and all. And Vegeta can see that he's getting into Cell's head. He wants a rival, right? Someone to have fun with. Vegeta could be that person. He powers up in a Super Saiyan Blue. He tells Cell he could fight this. The two of them can grow stronger together and take over this universe. All he has to do is just join Vegeta's side. Vegeta's willing to give him a chance. He knows Cell was created to protect Earth, but maybe he could be influenced. He could join the winning side. The evil parts of Cell start to become more prevalent. He's loyal to Earth, and he tells Vegeta he can't just turn on them like that. But Vegeta still tries to corrupt him, and Beerus encourages it too. He sees what Vegeta's doing. Although he wouldn't really want to have another student here to train, it could be interesting to train Cell. This guy seems interesting. But also, it'll help Vegeta grow stronger, which is the most important thing. The two continue fighting, and Cell starts slowing down a bit. Considering what Vegeta's telling him, Vegeta then shows off his ultimate power. Ultra Ego. He tells Cell he knows one way to influence him. And Cell is amazed. He's not going to be able to contend with this. This strength. He can't even really sense it too well, but he vaguely has an idea of it, and he can tell. This power. It's too much for him. And Vegeta pulls out his trump card to convince Cell. He kills Cell. Or at least attempts to. He doesn't use a Hakai or anything. He doesn't want to erase Cell for good. But he launches an attack so powerful that every little bit of him is gone. So strong that his mechanical regeneration is overcome. And for a moment, everything is silent. But Cell regenerates. And it's not his normal regeneration. He just pops back into place. He's confused. How did that happen? He, he should have died from that. He came back stronger as well. And Vegeta tells him, this is what he was saying. Cell is immortal too. They're equals. Cell has an eternal conflict. All the while, Vegeta does too. He was bluffing. Last time, he said he didn't really need anyone else. But honestly, 
he might need a rival like this, just to ease the boredom. He can't just fight Beerus and Weasel all the time, that's not going to let him go anywhere. Fighting an actual rival that's his equal, having someone to connect with, he needs that. He needs someone to keep him sane, whether that's a friend, rival, or whatever. But also someone that he can control, someone that won't turn against him, someone loyal to him. And Cell's the one person he could think of. First there was Broly, but he honestly can't trust Broly anymore, and Broly's gone, so that's no concern to him. So why not go for Cell? He tells Cell he'll let him consider it, powering down, allowing Cell to just leave. Which is strange, Beerus and Weezer are surprised to see this too. And Cell, he has an opening to attack Vegeta, but he doesn't. He actually just uses the Kai Kai and goes right back to Earth. He starts considering things. What Vegeta said is true, and honestly, he's also getting kind of bored. The people here on Earth, they're too weak, too weak for him to contend with, too weak for him to have a fun rivalry with. Although, Goku and Gohan are still trying to access something new. They've been trying to utilize that power of Great Ape that was mentioned before. And thanks to help from Bulma and from Cell's research too, they might have figured out a way. Bulma created a machine called a Bloodswave machine, one that replicates the energy from the moon that makes Saiyans transform into Great Apes. Utilizing that, Goku and Gohan are able to transform into Great Apes without their tails, then stacking Super Saiyan on top of it and eventually unlocking a brand new form. And normally this would be amazing for Cell, but after fighting Vegeta, this is nothing. He sees this form and yeah, it's cool, it's some sort of weird monkey form and it is way more powerful than anything they've used before. Cell sees Super Saiyan 4 and he's not too intrigued with it. After seeing what Vegeta has in store, this isn't fun. All he's been doing here is just sitting here being their punching bag and he can't even fight back. Anything he does, it's not fun. He was built to fight, he needs to fight. But with the two of them unlocking this new power, they train with it for a bit. But Cell wants to test something out. He wants to see how strong they truly are. So he makes them fight him and he tells them not to hold anything back. Goku's a bit confused, Cell's acting a little different this time. But the two of them fighting Cell isn't abnormal, so they don't really question it. A battle begins, and Cell is clearly way ahead of them. Even with the two of them utilizing this form, it's nothing. Remember, Cell just got stronger too thanks to his fight with Vegeta. And he's completely out of their league. And he contemplates it. Mid-fight, he can kill them. He can show off his true strength. He can finish them here and now. Join Vegeta. Do what Vegeta said. Get a good rival. Someone who's actually around his level in terms of power have fun fights, enjoy himself, use his full strength, what he was made for. But he can't bring himself to do it. He has these intrusive thoughts about killing Goku and Gohan, but he can't do it. He easily defeats them, and the two are still amazed. Cell is still as strong as ever, and they thank him for the fight. And Cell, he hesitates for a second, but then he sticks a hand out, turning towards Goku and Gohan, aiming a blast at them. Gohan looks on confused, shocked at first, but then, he sees that Cell is serious. If Cell is actually going to do this, then so be it. He powers back up into Super Saiyan 4. And Cell's kind of shocked too. They're not confused by this? Considering that Cell just turned on them, they're acting pretty nonchalant about it, like they knew this would happen. And Goku says flat out, they always knew that Cell might have had this within him, and they knew that they had to be prepared for this day. They're honestly kind of disappointed. They thought Cell was better than this. But they just want to know, what changed Cell? What happened to him that did this? They know he had that evilness within him, but they never thought it would be prevalent. Cell curses, aiming his hand away, launching the blast up into the sky. And he clearly wasn't holding back. It's a massive blast, making Goku go on stomach drop, but Cell then powers down, slamming his hand into the ground. Vegeta's getting in his head, and he tells them. He tells them everything. He sought out Vegeta. He was going to kill him, but he ended up fighting him, and Vegeta was trying to convince him to join his side. And Cell considered it for a bit. He explains everything, why he thought that way too. And they kind of actually understand where Cell is coming from. Look how strong he is, what he was created to be. They're not surprised that he's facing this dilemma, although this definitely isn't the way to go about it. Goku turns to Cell. He has a perfect idea. They'll attain Vegeta's power. Cell has no clue what they mean, but Goku says, look at them. They're Saiyans, and if Vegeta can grow that way, they can too. I mean, they became Super Saiyans when he did, so who's to say they can't get his forms as well? And Cell never thought of it that way. Yeah, they could all grow stronger together, maybe even getting rid of Vegeta down the line. But more importantly, everyone's on better terms now. They all continue discussing after the fight, but suddenly, three people appear out of nowhere, minutes after the fight ended. It's Vegeta, also those two other people from that planet, Beerus and Whis. Vegeta seems ticked off. He's monitored this fight thanks to Whis, wanting to watch Cell's reaction, but just as he thought, Cell isn't fit to be a rival. He may as well end this now then. He's been waiting to do so anyways, and after seeing this fight through Whis, he knows that he could win here, and he knows that nothing's gonna change. He'll always be on top of them. Part of him kinda wanted to see how strong they'd become, give himself more of a challenge, but it doesn't seem like they'll catch up anytime soon. 
Goku and Gohan weren't expecting this. They were a little worn out from that fight with the Cell too, but immediately they try and power up again, with Cell jumping in too. Everyone attacks Vegeta at once, as he transforms into Ultra Ego. He contemplates. He could just erase them here and now, ending it quickly. But a fight would be much more fun. He won't resort to that trick. His strength is enough to win here. But on a whim, Cell ends up having an idea. He wants to try and absorb Vegeta. That way he can gain his power. That's the only way he sees any sort of path to victory here. While Vegeta is distracted by Goku and Gohan, and also confident due to his own power, Cell's able to find an opening, widening his tail and trying to absorb Vegeta. That power will be his. Goku tells Cell not to do it. It's too risky. Beyond the fact that Vegeta might influence him even more than he has now, they don't know if it'll even work. But Cell says this is their only opportunity, the only way they could win. They can't kill him, so why not contain him like this? Beerus and Whis watch on with surprise as Vegeta disappears. And Cell stands there. He doesn't feel any different, but then he starts to feel strange. This isn't power that he's feeling, it's something else. Cell starts glowing, and then a massive explosion. A purple light illuminates the area, and when it dissipates, nothing is left. Besides some purple sparkles, some dust, and Vegeta. He Hakai'd Cell from within it. This enrages Vegeta, and it'll only fuel him further. He didn't want to resort to that. No more cheap tricks here. He wanted to win with his own power, but Cell, he gave Vegeta no choice. No more. He's not losing to any cheap tricks any longer. But they don't understand. How did he kill Cell? And Vegeta tells them. Cell might have DNA and data from Vegeta, but he isn't Vegeta. He can't survive something like that. The stupid robot should have taken his offer. But Vegeta knows something here isn't right. He saw this not too long before. Cell's not dead. Does this android have some sort of game here? He knows Cell can instantly regenerate if he wanted to, but for some reason, he's not. Vegeta will go along with it for now. He's faking his death, but he doesn't know why. Goku and Gohan on Rage, jumping in once again. A 2v1. This is more like it. Vegeta's kind of enjoying it, willingly accepting damage from them. Not that they could do much anyways, but any damage he does take will help him grow stronger. He won't need to erase them. He could just simply kill them. And he tells them, in all honesty, they're amazing Saiyan warriors. Seeing them grow to this level and getting new forms, it's been interesting to him, and it gave him some very valuable info that he didn't even know. But he's been waiting to do this for a while. An all-out battle with no tricks, no crutches, no teleporting him away, no androids, just a battle. A contest of raw power. But the issue is, it's no contest. Vegeta wins. Easily, in fact. Killing both Goku and Gohan. He powers back down. It's no surprise that he won. And they just kind of delayed the inevitable all this time. But something about that wasn't really too fulfilling. It's the same issue that Cell had. Vegeta's been waiting for this for so long, and it wasn't even really that fun. It wasn't a challenge at all. Think about what happened with Cell, too. He was going with something similar, and Vegeta realizes that conundrum now. Beerus commends Vegeta. Well done. Not that there was any doubt that he could win here, but it was fun watching that form in action. And now the real fun can begin. With nothing in Vegeta's way, Vegeta's now only focused on one thing. No longer focused on that revenge, or anything else. Now, he could train to become the next god of destruction, attaining even more power than before. He tells them he's ready to leave. But before he goes, he wants to make sure this planet causes no more trouble. He taps the ground. The planet cracks, glowing purple. Beerus, Whis, and Vegeta all depart as the planet explodes. No more of that. Vegeta could leave that all in the past. Looking ahead, it's only him. No one to contend against him. Well, besides Beerus. But he'll overcome Beerus next. Just give him some time. Vegeta is truly above everything. And now, he's pretty much unstoppable. They arrive back on Beerus' planet, Vegeta sees a very familiar face there. It's Cell. He knew it. Of course he'd come join Vegeta. When Cell got quote-unquote killed by Vegeta just then, it made him realize this was inevitable. No matter what Goku and Gohan had in mind, it wouldn't work. Vegeta is truly the one to be his rival. But Vegeta questions, why'd he leave Earth? Why'd he fake his death? And Cell has two reasons. He knew, for one, that this was Vegeta's fight. He didn't want a medal. And at the same time, although he hates to admit it, he didn't have the heart to watch Goku and Gohan die. Much less participate in that. Vegeta tells Cell that's kind of pathetic. But he's glad that Cell's showing more signs of being like Vegeta, kind of. The guy made to kill Goku. Being made to be good, and then being corrupted by Vegeta. And this is only the beginning. For eternity, the two of them will be rivals. Growing exponentially stronger together, doing whatever they please. Being the strongest in this universe and any other that's out there. And this is where we'll end off our series. So, I looked back at the original ending, and I genuinely don't know what happened there, why I wrote it like that. My apologies, there's a reason that I changed it in this version of the scenario. In case you have no clue what I'm talking about, well, there's a different finale to the series. It's a good ending. One where Vegeta's defeated, but it doesn't really make much sense. But if you don't like bad endings, hey, there's this for you. Just be prepared to heavily suspend your disbelief for that. Again, there's a reason I changed it. Looking back, there's some plot holes, and it's just kind of weird in general. Doesn't make too much sense now in hindsight, but hindsight is 2020. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy this scenario, and be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the series, and I'll see you on my next video.